I've never played a video game. I don't even know what I am playing. Kingdom Hearts. It's super normal. All right, class. Settle down. Okay. Professor Oliver's had a long day. And we just want to get through this shit. Welcome to uh, Guilty Gear Timeline, Baby's First Guilty Gear Timeline. That's the point of this lecture today, Munchie. What is Guilty Gear? We're going to get to that. I just let me, let me, <laughs> let me, let me, for, believe it or not, by the time we get from here to here, you will know. Oh, cool. Me? You. <laughs> I made be? this class specifically for you. <laughs> so we're, we're on, all right, I've yeah. already... One person sated. Okay, so the point of this is we're going to break down the bare essentials of the Guilty Gear timeline, which is known to be a, a, a very dense, uh, difficult to digest uh, lore in video games. And after beating the shit out of my brain with it for three weeks, I can confirm the rumors are true. Um, so despite that this is a baby timeline, this is an advanced course, so I expect everyone to be taking notes. And if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand because I'm sure you'll probably have questions like I do, still do. Okay, so uh, just for anybody who isn't aware, yes, Munchie. But Nate's taking notes and passing them. Check me out, dude. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this shit right now. But it's, but it's lit! Okay, go on. What else Guilty Gear? It's literature. Good, good job. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Guilty Gear is a series of fighting games that started all the way back on the PS1, and they're still coming out to this day. They're, they're mostly fighting games. There are a few notable exceptions that we will get into. But for the most part, it's a series of fighting games. Uh, the only one name that you really need to know about Guilty Gear is this guy right here, Daisuke Ishiwatari. He's our boy, and he's our god. This is like his brainchild through and through. From what I've been able to understand, he is the director, lead writer, lead art designer, and the composer for the entire series. Yes, everything. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, so basically. Is he Toby Fox? Almost. He's this almost. Like some, this is like some, what's that bullet hell? Toho? Toho? It's like some oh, Toho shit. Yeah. So basically, everything that Wait. requires like creativity and talent and isn't an automaton like skill, he does. So everything that's weird about this shit, it's his fault. Nate. Should we put the mattress in front of the thing? Maybe. Stop the noise. Yeah, it seemed like it helped. That just got really loud. I just noticed it. So, you want, you want to, shall we go get it? Okay. okay sorry to interrupt. But I no, I need. We need to make a complaint to uh, the custodian to fucking fix that shit. We need to soundproof it. <laughs> um, this is what happens when you get these really niche classes. They don't. don't cut our school education budget. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So yeah. Daisuke is our boy and our god. He's responsible for pretty much all of the creative decisions, like, like all the big head honcho decisions. Um, I'm sure there's other people involved too, but this, this has been his baby forever. Uh, I think the first, the first game, Guilty Gear 1, came out in 90... I want to say either 97 or 98. It was a good year, as we discussed earlier. Um, and they've just been going for a while ever since. And uh, started on the PS1, stayed mostly on PlayStation. There was one exception. Guilty Gear 2 came out only on the 360 initially, which is kind of weird. Uh, but that was a weird game in general. But, uh, yeah, the game centers around uh, two, two main protagonists, uh, Soul Bad Guy, that is not his real name, but everyone calls him that, and Kai Kisk, and they're kind of like, like the Ken and Ryu of Guilty Gear. Nate. What's Soul's real name? Uh, we will get to that. Okay. It's lore sp uh, important. Mm. Munchie. Tetsuya Nomura. I'm sorry. No spoilers. <laughs> His name is Bad Guy? Yes, his name is Bad Guy. It's actually not, I didn't put it in the lecture, but the reason his name is Soul Bad Guy is um, he was going around killing gears during the Crusades and nobody knew who he was, so they, his, his code name, they just called him The Bad Guy because he went around fucking shit up. And then uh, there is a vampire that he meets eventually in the game. There are vampires in this. Uh, he meets a vampire, hangs around with him for a while, and he just steals like this guy's like, he's like full of like energy and intensity and like is like the light of the world. So he, call, he gives him a name, Soul which means son, because that's the name. So he combines them, and he becomes Soul Bad Guy. Yes. Is he a bad guy? <sighs> he's a real bad dude. He's a bad, he's definitely a bad dude. He could save the president, for sure. Um, <laughs> in fact, he actually does do that multiple times. Yeah. So, so, on point. Oh, but he is kind of a good guy, too. 
I, I, I didn't want to be a brown nose or anything, but I heard that he was heavily inspired, bad guy and whatnot, by Freddie Mercury. Yes. Yes. It, um, there's, this game is laden mm. with metal and rock references up the ass. Like, every attack, every, like, city, every, like, e- everything. The, the wiki is full of just, like, all this shit. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's insane. Uh, Soul Bad Guy is actually also a self-insert, essentially. It's basically mm. Dice Gay's, like... What he wants himself to be. So this is this is one of those kind of projects. Hippo. Is that a JoJo reference? Sure. The the, the music things. Uh, I I don't know anything about. Is it JoJo's. a reference to JoJo? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. This, this is this is all music. just <laughs> part of the JoJo canon, uh, for sure. Okay. Um, so. Guilty Gear starts with Guilty Gear 1 over here, but if you notice, there's a fuck ton of shit here. The entire story of Guilty Gear is dependent. It takes place in the late 22nd century, so it starts in 2180. However, everything that happens in the story is entirely dependent on shit that happened 200 years ago. So if you don't know any of this shit by reading up on, on, on stuff and like wikis and stuff, nothing in here will make any sense at all. So before we can get to Guilty Gear 1, we have to go all the way back to the far off future of 1999, the dawn of revival. This is the first like big shit that happens in Guilty Gear. So up until 1999, as far as I can tell, the world was pretty much exactly the same as our world. So there were no like big differences. Like this isn't Ben. I have a question. The, the first game was in 97? I believe it came out in 97, so, in that time zone. So at this point, nine, nine, setting it in 1999 was like saying it was in the near future. Correct. Okay. This game at the time took place in the near future. But by this point, this shit, like, like, we're past this. So unfortunately, my dream of becoming like a gear or something will never happen. My dreams have been dashed unless some crazy shit happens eventually. Uh, but yeah, actually, this was all taking place kind of questionably in secret, so we might still be on track. Mm-hmm. Not sure. Uh, but yeah, so the Dawn of Revival is the first thing that happens. Uh, up until this point, everything's pretty much the same. This doesn't take place in like an alternate world. This is like the Earth. There's like, you know, the United States and France and Russia and all, all the crazy shit. Daisuke was banking on this stuff happening to, to further his career. You know? um, he was looking forward to these things, I I, 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 I really don't know. The man's a mystery. Um, but he looks like an 80s, like, heavy metal Japanese kind of guy. Like, today. It's, it's, it's fucking sick. 20 years later. I would love, I'd love to beat him. There's, like, a photo of him from, like, 2014 at a convention. And he just looks like he walked out of the 80s, and I love him. Um, so the dawn of revival happens. And so this is the first big thing that kind of, like, forks this timeline away from our world. And in the dawn of revival, we're going to start off at a 10, my friends. Uh, all the technology in the world goes ape shit at the same time for several hours and s- and somehow they figure out that the tech no- the, there is there's an a life form trying to manifest itself through the circuitry of technology for several hours and this freaks everyone the fuck out munchy pacemakers what about my pacemaker will my pacemaker work when the technology revolts no Okay. You're fucked. Well, uh, so, so as opposed to like an EMP blast, which would have like turned everything off so it doesn't work, they specifically, they go like crazy. They start doing stuff. This is like two sentences in a <laughs> library of, <laughs> okay. uh, of, of Exard. So maybe. Uh, okay. I'm not exactly okay. sure the, the specifics of this because this actually ties into stuff later mm. and it raises a lot of questions like how the fuck did they deal with this? If all this stuff wasn't in place, we'll, we'll get there. But, but basically, long story short, a life form manifests in all technology around the world simultaneously and tries to come into our reality. And somehow it's prevented or it's just like, eh, fuck it, and decides not to do that. Um, so everybody freaks the fuck out because their iPhones are revolting or, you know, their Nokia 3310s because it's 1999. Um, and so the UN, in response, is like, all technology is banned. <laughs> all of it. So no one is allowed to use technology. We don't want to see a single wheel rolling down this no, road. it's literally, it's all referred to as black tech. You can't touch it. It's illegal. Ben. Guy's talking out of turn. He should get demerits. I'm keeping silent track. He's already staying after class. Yeah. Munch Suck it. All technology's banned, right? Yes. My pacemaker. <laughs> what about my pacemaker? Sacrifices have to be made for the greater good, dude. We don't want this mysterious organism to spawn in the real world again. Okay. It already killed you. Do you want it getting away with it? Yeah, I guess so. Now, there's, it's not really clear, like... Where the the breakoff point of like how 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 high tech is too high tech? You know, like 
Are wheels fucked? That's kind of technology, you know? Like, what about the inclined plane? <laughs> yeah. just, we just, I'm, it's, it's really not made clear. I'm assuming it's anything digital, like, 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 like silicon and circuitry and stuff. That's kind of what it's implied to be. Um, so, banned. And everyone's just like, shit, but okay. Like, we don't want this happening. So all technology is, is banned around the entire globe. And predictably, everyone's like, fuck. What do we do without MySpace? So now everyone's miserable. Society is on the decline. Shit is bad. Humanity is grinding to a halt. Yeah, Tom can't be your friend anymore. You're fucked. Uh, So fuck your iPhone. Uh, So this is bad. Then a couple months later, we're all saved because these guys arrived. The arrival of the apostles. And they are five super powerful mages who come out of literally nowhere and are just like, hey guys, you know what's cool? Magic. We're going to teach you how to use magic to replace technology. So they come in and everyone's just like, okay, cool. I guess we can use magic now. Uh, So magic has always existed in the lore of Guilty Gear. We can actually go all the way back to the year like 1100 where some crazy shit happens with magic. So magic has always existed. This is the first time it kind of comes into the mainstream. Digi. Are are the apostles like uh, playable characters at all in the Guilty Gear games? Okay. They are not. Um, but they show up, they're pretty cool dudes, they, they, they don't want to do anything bad, they just want to save humanity from its own lack of social media. So they're like, let's do magic instead. So they teach everybody how to use magic. Uh, so uh, from 1999 to 2008, they kind of like establish themselves, they become like big cool dudes. Hippo. Did the apostles make the ruination of technology so that they could appear and give magic to people? They did not, actually. Oh. They had nothing to do was, with I it. I thought I was being clever. I, you know what? I, that was kind of what I thought, too, when I was at this point. I was like, I see what you're doing. Not true. Very, very interesting. Uh, so they come. They teach everybody magic. In 2008, they establish uh, the Sanctus Maximus Populi, which is kind of like a governmental organization to help spread magic across the entire world. Nate. So this was in 2000 and year and eight that the apostles appeared? They appeared in 1999. Oh, okay. Uh, a couple months after the Dawn Revival, because there's no way we would have made it without Facebook for eight years, mm-hmm. let's be real. Mm-hmm. Um, so the same year, a couple months later, they come out of nowhere and like, we got you. And then uh, they just kind of like rise to fame. People are like, you guys are fucking cool. And, and they start like, they kind of like slowly kind of do things naturally, but eventually like, we need to get this shit. We need to get some bureaucracy in here to make this shit like really good. And so that's what happens, and they start the Sanctus Maximus Populi, uh, and that's like their group. And that was in 2008? That was in 2008. Same year Obama got elected. Oh, is he, is he guilty gear? Is Obama guilty gear? I didn't want to say it. Yes. Yes, he is. Um, okay, so this is a good point to break into what exactly is magic in guilty gear, because it's kind of weird. Uh, so it's kind of like this blend of like natural and supernatural phenomenon. So... Uh, it's, it's, there's, it does a bunch of crazy shit that no one really understands, but also there is something called the, the theory of magical science. So it can be studied as a science, and you can base technology on magic instead of regular technology. So there's like Magitech replacements for most of the common things that would existed pre-Dawn of Revival, and we've kind of learned how to break down like the basic building blocks of how magic works to use it as a basis for like, you know, cars and buildings and, and machines and all that kind of stuff. Uh, like instead of iPhones, they have these little like, holograms that kind of hold up their heads and they can talk and they can take photos and stuff. They have like the coolest smartphones, 10 out of 10, um, which is obviously the most important thing to develop. Uh, so magic, uh, let me let me check my notes because this is, this is going to be, it's basically, it was until like around here, we, all we knew about it really was that it was unlimited power source. So like one of the biggest problems is like no technology, there's no nuclear power, there's no electricity, there's none of that shit. So we're all fucked. Magic is an unlimited power source. It doesn't, it's totally green, 100% clean. That is, there's a big environmental movement that happens around here too with the introduction of magic. So it's an unlimited power source. Ben. But like how do you use it? Do you have to like study rituals or like open a, open an old book or something? Maybe mm. they don't really go into that part. It's it's more Damn. it's it's treated more as a science than as like like fantasy magic. Like it's it's basically like it's basically a power source you can tap into. Like every time they talk about the the like how magic works, they go into like Star Trek esque techno babble instead of just like casting circles and shit. So it's not like wizards casting spells. You can do that. But you're a really smart guy if you can do that. Mm-hmm. You have hope in this future, Ben. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Okay, so yeah, it rides the line between natural and supernatural phenomenon. Is the source of all the power and abilities in Guilty Gear. So when like Soul like shoots fire, that's fire magic. Um, and yeah, it's able to be specifically studied scientifically. The magical theory of science—that's what it's called. It's it's a whole like scientific thing that's replaced old gay science up here. We have this new cool magical science that we're using now. So there are five main branches of of magic. There's fire magic, lightning magic, wind magic, water magic, and key. So key is like spiritual energy magic. Um, so it's not just limited to elemental expression, though. Magic can pre do pretty much anything. Uh, time travel, summoning, you name it, it can do it. Daisuke is just like, magic is this cool shit. Whatever he wants it to do, it can do. And he can be like, it's magic, motherfucker. And you can't argue with it anymore. This is like his ultimate MacGuffin. Of just like, whatever I want to happen, I got my excuse. So... Yeah, that's, that's what magic can do. Um, elemental magic is the most common and most understood. People can usually use one kind of magic. It's kind of like Avatar in that respect. We can be like a pyromancer or like a lightning man, whatever the fuck you want to call it. However, key is the most powerful magic and it's the most misunderstood or the most mysterious because it breaks all the laws of the theory of magical science. And for some... Well, that didn't take long. For, yeah. <laughs> for some... It gets weird. For some reason... Only Japanese people can use key. No, no one else no, can. You're kidding. I, I am <laughs> not. not serious. Is, is it possible that that's because Japan is the only place that has a word for key? I don't know. Maybe. But it's, yes, Ben. Is everyone in Guilty Gear Japanese or no. most of them? Okay. Not even we, will, we will get to that shortly, my friend. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> trust me. I, I got everything here. Um, isn't it that at least one of the games, like, Japanese people are generally being hunted? Like, aren't they heavily per persecuted? Couple, for, yes. For and we will, we will get to why in a second. Um, we're actually getting pretty close to that. Okay. So, uh, we do all that. That's what magic is. It's pretty cool. Everybody likes it. 2010, two years later, magic is fucking everywhere now. We've successfully transitioned. You know how, like, in 2007, the iPhone came out, and, like, when you had a smartphone, everyone's like, holy shit! It's fucking rad! And then, like, now it's just, like... Who cares? Like, it, it's not cool anymore. That's what magic is at this point. It's everywhere. You're not cool anymore. Of course you're a mage. Everybody is. I don't care. Uh, so that's where magic is by 2010. Um, yeah. So there's also a huge environmental movement going on at this point, too. So everyone is actively de uh, deconstructing and destroying all the old technology, like all the remnants of old tech that's been banned. It's, like, specifically called black tech. You're not allowed to use it. They're getting rid of it. Did you have a question? Okay. I'm just... I'm assuming that everything I say is going to prompt questions at this point. All right. I need some fucking water. We're, we're, we barely even scratch the surface. Okay. 2014. The Gear Project begins. This is the single most important event in the entire timeline of Guild's Gear and affects everything going forward. That's why it's called Guilty Gear. Sort of. But we'll get to exactly why. Um... So this is implied to have been started by the United States of America, but it's never specifically said. So it was maybe probably the U.S. was like, let's make gears. So the gear project is originally designed to use magic, the, science, the magic of science, the science of magical theory, um, to genetically alter human beings on a cellular level to artificially influence human evolution. We're going really ham with magic. Like, we're just like, okay, we're bored with fire. What else can we do? So that's the idea behind the gear project. But eventually, they're like, eh, fuck it. Let's just make bioweapons. It sounds so much cooler, and it's way easier. So, um, yeah, originally designed to do that, blah, blah, blah. Only a handful of people are known about this project. It's super secret. Uh, th 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 there's only, like, two entries in the codex. There's not a lot about it. Nate. Uh, so originally gears were just going to be humans, but just like better and, and like guide yeah. down a, a, a the U.S. was like path. transhumanism, mm. magic. Yes, that was the original idea. And so, but it changed to be okay. We're kind of going to spin off from that and make them like you know uh, like a, ga a guy who's got a nuke inside him or like something crazy. Yeah, they like just that. say oh okay. they're crazier than that, my friend. Uh, but crazier yes, than that. okay. that's that's the okay. idea. Um, so there's only a handful of people known who are involved in the Guilty Gear so project. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah, I know that guy. Kind okay, of. Right, right. We'll get to that. We, kind <laughs> of. It's funny you say nuke specifically for a reason we made clear in a few seconds. So the, the most important people in the entire Guilty Gear canon were involved in the Gear Project. They were Frederick Bulgara, Arya Hale, and that man. 
He's only referred to as that man. He's like the Voldemort of Guilty Gear. Munchie. Have you seen this man in your dreams? Thousands of people worldwide dream about this man. Thisman.org. He's actually Florida man. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> what happened to the apostles? They, Are they still around? They kind of just disappeared and everyone forgot about them. Mm. Canon. Oh. <laughs> we'll get back to them, but for now, okay. everyone was just like, they're so like, mesmerized by their magic iPhones, they don't remember who gave it to them anymore. They just don't care. So they just kind of fade into the background, and shit just keeps going on. So the gear project starts. Arya, Frederick, that man. They're super important. They influence all this shit. Uh, so they're all super smart, intelligent, sciencey guys working on this gear project. Now, uh, that man is kind of like, he's not the head guy, but he's one of the, like, the big high-level guys. And then there's Arya and Frederick. They're all, they're all friends. They're like that, tree, that trinity, that shonen anime trinity kind of friend guys. They're all buddies. And Frederick and Arya, they eventually hook up, and they're just like, yeah, we're, we're dating, we're, we're lovers, we're cool. Nate. Uh, uh, you, you said they're uh, high-up guys. High-up guys in, in what institution? In the United States? Project, uh, assumedly... Yeah. United States and whatever uh -huh. scientific division of the U.S., maybe, probably U.S., was involved in doing the gear project. Okay. Okay. They're smart dudes doing smart dude shit mm -hmm. is what we really need to understand about them. Um, so the, the only problem is that like, they're doing this shit. Everything's cool. Uh, 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 Frederick and Arya, they fall in love. Uh, that man is their buddy. They're all having a good time. Then they find out that Arya is terminally ill, and she refuses to accept treatment because they don't actually have a treatment for this. But of course, that man and Frederick are super smart sciencey guys. So like, let's, let's stop working on this gear gay shit and let's make you not die. And she's like, no, I don't want to not die because like, they're just like, well, we can cryogenically freeze you and we can like work on like trying to figure it out. She's like, no, Frederick, I love you. I just want to spend my last few years with you because you're the coolest guy ever. And he's like, Fuck that shit, I'm smart, I'm gonna figure this out. So we see, he, he rejects that, but she ends up apparently dying anyways. They don't, they don't find the cure in time, and he's really sad. And so they kind of just keep working on shit. And, and so he's, he's just a sad boy, because his, you know, he can't bang his hot GF anymore, which, you know, understandable. Okay, so... First documented MGTOW. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I, I was doing that. I was raising my hand. First talking to him in MGTOW, sad about his wife's death, <laughs> the ultimate MGTOW pastime. You know, it's funny, but I can't say anything right now because it will spoil things. Okay. But, but the I've, MGTOWs will rise. Yeah, yeah, I have a good later. zinger for that. Let it be known. Okay. So um, two years later, in 2016, they the, the Gear Project is going good, and they successfully create the first prototype functioning humanoid gear. So how a gear works is that it's not um, specifically like an artificially created life form. You take an existing life form, you modify it on a genetic level, and infuse it with what are essentially referred to as gear cells, um, and it becomes a gear, and you weaponize it. So you, the, most of the time, you can make them do really whatever you want, but they basically turn to big, giant, monster, rape, rapey guys who just kind of get big claws and look scary, and they have no brains anymore, and they just smash shit. Because, again, we're trying to make weapons that fuck shit up. And what, what, what's a more effective weapon than big monsters that you have to somehow transport and you can't, like, turn off? It's brilliant. Um, but they first they make a humanoid gear. So they, they, and they experiment on a human to try and turn a human being into a gear. Just like, what would happen? Let's find out. And the first humanoid gear is Frederick. He's transformed into a gear. We don't know if it was willingly or not, but considering the first thing he does after he becomes a gear is trash the facility and run the fuck away, mm. probably not, on, not, not a thing he volunteered for. Nate. But so he was one of the people running this operation. Yes. And yet they chose him to be the right test subject. Yes, they did. The sign. Seems strange. Seems uh, like an odd choice. Very tr Exactly. Okay. There actually is a story reason way the fuck later. Uh -oh. But it is weird. Um, okay, so Frederick is now a gear, but um, some humanoid gears can retain their sense of self, especially humanoid gears, because they have brains. Like if you take a dog and make a dog gear, it's a dog. But sometimes humans can retain their sense of self, and he does. So uh, he, he, he just kind of runs away, and they're like, shit, our facility's blowed up, our boy's gone. The bosses aren't going to be happy about this. And they're not. They shut the project down in 2014. And everybody who was involved in the project, so that man's the only ones left that we know about, disappear. 
They're gone. Nate. So he was the only humanoid gear made? Not clear. Okay. Not sure. He's the only one that we know about. There are implications further in the canon that there were other prototypes made, but as far as we know at this point, he's the only one that matters. And he's the only one that's been specifically named in the canon, Munchie. So I had a question, and it was something about Guilty Gear, but it's, I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot to digest. Who's uh, guilty? Did you? Yeah. Who, who would win in a fight, a Guilty Gear or a Metal Gear? A Guilty Gear... For sure. Okay. A Guilty Gear could probably take like 200 Metal Gears, no problem. God damn. This is like some Dragon Ball Z shit. We're going to get to it. Now. What happened to our boy Fred? What happened to him? Frederick? Yeah. Where'd, where'd he go? He a Where, yeah, he's a gear now. Well, I know, but like... He, he just... ran away and then what happened? I yeah, guess. yeah. yeah. Um, uh, he's he's going to pop back up in here a little okay. bit. Okay. We'll get to him. But he's kind of... He's not referenced a super bunch. Okay. Uh, but he is still around. He's cool. Because once you're a gear, you're immortal. You can't, you can't age. Oh, okay. So he's just like... Shit, you know? Um, okay, so for the next 60 years, shit just starts brewing. So this is like shut down, stuff isn't happening. Uh, Frederick, because he's still a super smart sciencey man, he creates an inhibitor device that he puts on his body and he can pass as human. Because once you turn into a gear, you don't look human anymore. You look like a scary, raw, raw monster. Mm. So he makes an inhibitor device that makes him significantly weaker than he would be as an actual full-fledged gear. But he looks, for the most part, human. So he kind of just hides in society. He's like, fuck, guys, my girlfriend's dead and now I'm a monster. This sucks. Mm. So he's just kind of a sad boy yeah, doing, cool. doing sad boy things. Um, so, and despite, like, being off the books, that man, I guess, is still kind of tooling around doing, playing with gear stuff because he likes to. Uh, in 2042, the gear project officially restarts again because this is, like, like, 30 or something years later. Magic is a big thing. So the United States is just, like, not big in the political stage anymore. So, like, mm, well, if we can't be cool guys making, like, toys and shit, let's just fucking start killing people and just, like, make an empire. So they decided to make gears again to try and, like, take over everybody. Ben. Question about that man. Is his name like does his name like less awkward in Japanese? No. I have no idea. Uh, I don't know Japanese. Uh, Nate is the phrase that uh, man. I am going to just let you know that like as he said, everything's a reference to a song or something. So like all the names are awkward and strange in Guilty Gear because they are all like strained music references. Yeah. But they are all, that's also why it's awesome. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean the if your character's name is Soul Bad Guy. Yeah. yeah. So if you're if you're a big if you're a big metal buff, there's tons of things like Kai Kisks. His like ultimate attack is called Rising Force, and uh, hey. uh, Souls is Napalm Death. So like it just yeah. there's tons. It's littered everywhere. You can't go like three seconds without finding a, a metal reference in Guilty Gear. Um, yeah. So the Gear Project restarts in 2042 because the U.S. is like, shit, guys, we're not cool. We can't sell stuff to people anymore. Let's kill them instead. Nate. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I just guys, the mic. I just wanted to uh, illustrate on the point of that man. I just looked it up, and in Japanese, that man's name is Ano Otoko, as in the Japanese phrase for, you know, the, the Japanese term, that, that man that over man. there. Yeah. So it's not like that, Zatoman or anything. It, it is literally, like, they're saying, like, that man, like, that man. Just, just saying. Okay. Like that was yeah, no, it, it's not like a wordplay or anything that we're literally translating. Right. They literally just call him, like, that, that man. That appears to not be a reference. They're simply saying that man. No, that I, man don't, is... I don't believe that's a reference. From mm -hmm. what I can tell, it's just, they're just, you know, he's like... He's like Voldemort. Like, you can't say his name. He's a uh, bad boy. Munchie. Oh, so, so he is a bad boy. There's a reason why I can't say his name. Um, yeah, he's, he's going to just... He hasn't done anything yet. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, will yet. he do things? Well, okay, okay. If they call him that man. You know he's going to do something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So at this point, from what I can tell, that man is now helming the entire project. He's like the, the head honcho. Or he's like up there. He's like even more up there than before because like the other two guys are gone. So he's like... Working on the shit, making gears happen. Okay. In 2065, the first combat-ready gear is completed. Uh, so they're, they're making progress, doing shit. Then we get to 2074, and this is when the bad things start. Everything was going great until 2074. So in 2074, the first perfect gear is completed. Justice. She's fucking dope as shit, super powerful, will fuck your shit up. She's like the ultimate fucking gear. And that man made her, and she wrecks Nate. Uh, I'm just curious. What defines a perfect gear? Do, do they have a sense of self? Are they, like, intelligent soldiers? Or are they just, like, really good killing machines? A perfect gear... Well, technically... We're going to get into it in a second, but uh, ju what makes Justice special is that she's, like... Basically, she's the culmination of that man's research into, into gear uh, 
cellular kind of manipulation and stuff. So she's like the, the, the end result of all of his research. Uh, she's also special because she's what's called a commander gear. Uh, so she can command other gears. She's kind of like a general. Um, which is going to be very important. D does that mean she has some sort of like psychic connection that allows her to like manipulate them? She can basically inject her programming into other gears, regardless of their if they have a sense of will or not. So even if you're a gear who has a sense of self, Justin can be like, "Fuck your brain, it's mine now," and now you just do whatever she says. So she's she's kind of cool like that, but kind of scary. So Justice is created. That man's like, I fucking did it, guys. I'm a good dude. Um, but somehow, Frederick, still tooling around, minding his own business, becomes aware that that man made Justice. It's not sure if like this is some secret dark black project that nobody knows about, or America's just like, hey, guys, today in like fucking New York Times, we fucking finished Justice. Yeah. Uh, not really clear. But somehow Frederick does find out that Justice was completed. And because he's a gear himself and knows how fucking bad gears can be, he creates a counterweapon called the Outrage. Uh, we don't know much about it, but it's pretty cool. Uh, and it can fuck gears up pretty bad. But it itself is not a gear? It is not a gear. Okay. It, is, it is not a, a, a biological weapon. It's like a, like a sword gun kind of thingy. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to really get into it, but I can explain it. It's actually eight separate weapons that combine together to form an ultimate weapon. Mm -hmm. So there, some, some of the characters in the games use outrage, one of the outrages, as their weapon. Just like the famous sword used by Cloud Strife and Advent Children. There you go. Oh. You just made that so much gayer. I'm sorry. And it was already pretty gay. Um, okay, so 2074, they got justice. They got the shit on lock. They got combat ready gears ready to go. They start mass producing these motherfuckers and are, gonna, are set to invade everybody and be like, America's colonizing, motherfucker, white power. <laughs> Not really, but <laughs> probably. <laughs> um, so that's, that's their plan. And so justice, who still has like a sense of self because she's like, the super powerful guy is like, you're not using my people for your shit, and I can command them. Fuck you! And commands, takes control of all the gears that have been created, and is like, let's just kill you guys instead. Mm -hmm. And so this starts on a hundred year war called the Crusades, where America fucked everything up again, thanks Trump, and now there's fucking <laughs> all these gears everywhere. I thought, Justice was, I thought Justice was the first gear. She's the first perfect gear. Per first perfect gear. Yes, okay. she's the first perfect gear, but there are a fuck ton of other ones made. So this is probably a good time to get into what is a gear. I was going to do that up here, but this, was, this is a better place for it. What is a gear? Uh, this is where the series gets its name. Gears are not like you know, a gear turny thing. They're, they're a biological weapon. Uh, they're not a species in of itself. You modify existing species. Most gears are mindless monsters. They just go around and smash shit. Uh, but you can have certain gears that retain a sense of self, mostly ones derived from human beings. Digi. Uh, are any of or how many of the player characters are gears? <sighs> Spoilers to get into it, um, but not many. Okay. Is Dizzy a gear? She is. We'll get okay. to Dizzy. She so. is. She's technically half gear, but I don't know why she's only half gear. Munchie. So the like gross weird monsters, right? Yeah. Like are we talking like Godzilla or like they like run a the gamut. Rat or... They they actually run the gamut. So there's a bunch of different kinds of gears. There's there's like regular foot soldier gears, are just like a really ugly looking zombie kind of dude. There's commander gears, which can look like really anything. They're mostly humanoid, just because you want them to be smart so they can think and how to do stuff. There's only a couple of those that we know about, but there are ones called mega death gears, another metal <laughs> reference, that can yeah. be as big as entire cities, <laughs> and they're not fucking around, and they will fuck your shit up. But, okay, so if, if a gear is made from something, what did they use to make a gear the size of a city? Magic. <laughs> Remember, okay, right, this, right. this is important up here. Gotcha. So, the, you know, they, they, they just shot a lot of lightning at it and it became really big. I don't fucking know, dude. <laughs> They don't, fuck it, this Guilty Gear, as you're going to learn, is designed in reverse. Like, this is a cool idea. How can I shove my bullshit back into it to kind of make it, make it make sense? As opposed to being like thinking from the bottom up. So that's a recurring theme throughout all of this. So there's big fucking gears. They're fucking shit up. Uh, everyone's pretty pissed off. The first thing that Justice does that kind of starts the Crusades is she's like, I hate anime and blows up the entire island of Japan the landmass destroyed. <laughs> Fucking obliterated. Finally. No. Yeah, so no more anime. No more key. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the reasons why we think that she did it. She wanted to get rid of all those key users. So they're fucking... There's a huge crater on the bottom of the ocean. She has a gamma ray that just... Pew! Bloop, gone. 
Okay, so she wanted to get rid of Japan because they have Ki, but why was Ki a problem for her? Why was that something that she felt the need to get rid of? Well, because uh, wait, wait, magic... Did she feel they were going to try to stop them? Yes. Okay. Magic, even though if you're just a regular dude, if you know how to use magic, you can kick some serious ass. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a really good magic user, you can fight a gear and keep up. So this isn't like, oh my god, humanity's fucked, all we have are like M16s and like, like planes. No, we can shoot fireballs for fun. Like, we're, 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 we're fucked, but we're not super fucked, is kind of where we're at right now. So like, but Key is like this, they don't explain a lot about Key. Like, I'm assuming probably somewhere down here we might learn more about it, but we haven't gotten there yet. Ben. Gears can also use magic, right? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah they can. Um, they're, made, they're basically made with magic, so yeah. Right. Yeah, so some shit, some shit's going down. So the crusade starts. It's some bad shit. We're kind of fucked. Um, do, 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 do. Yep, 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 yep. So uh, Japan, gone. Shit. No more anime. That's bad. And clearly the world is pissed. We're not having this shit. We declare war on the Gears. Uh, the UN's like, fuck you. And they form a new series of, 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 of fighting people called the Sacred Order of Holy Knights. And that's why it's called the Crusades. It's like a holy war. And we're like... Fuck them, and we go after them. Nate. So is that, is that in uh, 2074 when the bomb drops on Japan? Yes. And that's, that's like when it's like, okay, now it's time. Yeah, we make it's go thing. time. Okay. So we nuked Japan again, finished the job this time, <laughs> and now we're going, going for the throat. So, yeah, uh, there's, a, there's a big... Well, yeah, it's an American, justice is an American creation. That Correct. That blew up Japan. Yeah, we cool. finished the job. Nice. It took us a while, <laughs> but we got there. It took like a hundred and change years, but, you know... Hashtag finish the job. Um, so Justice does what Drumpf don't. <laughs> Hell yeah. So we're like, fuck, dude. These gears are kicking our ass. We need to fuck them up. So they create the Sacred Order of Holy Knights. Uh, they're like the premier fighting force of the world. All the world kind of bombs together. And they're like, we, gotta, we have a common enemy now. We've got to kill these robot fucks. And so we start, we start going ham on them. Not a whole lot is known about this 100-year period in the Crusades. But like the one thing we really know comes from one dude named Cliff Motherfucking Anderson. That's not his actual middle name, but it might as well be because he's the coolest dude. He fucks everything up. He's, he's the only non-Japanese who can use key, so he doesn't fuck around. Uh, there's this big fucking monster, this big fucking monster gear, Megadeth class gear, that is destroying all of London and like the entire Sacred Order of Holy Knights is just holding it back and barely fucking winning. Cliff bombs in by himself and fights it for seven days straight alone and is able to cut off three of its heads and a bunch of its limbs before the rest of the fucking knights come in and steal it away. We can't kill gears very easily because we're just little people. So a lot of the times what's done is we kind of seal them in like an alternate dimension or kind of keep them in stasis or something like that. That's kind of how we deal with like the bigger like fuck you gears. Nate. What was his name again? This, this guy? Cliff Anderson. Cliff Anderson. So he's the ultimate weeb. He's the only man who has the understanding yeah, of Japanese yeah. culture. He watched such that he so can much use fucking key. anime and got right. so pissed when fucking the last rebuild movie is never going to come out or something. He just went ham on him. Is he a playable character? He is. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, his, his appearances in, in later in the series aren't technically canon because he's an old guy by, by the end of this. Um, but he is playable in Guilty Gear 1. And, and he's pretty cool. He's just this, by then he's an old guy. He kind of like squats down like this. He got a big giant fucking knife that's like huge, like just as big as he is. Um, I think it's called the Dragon Slayer, the Dragon's Tooth, or something like that. Um, probably a berserk reference. But yeah, he's fucking cool. And his key power lets him become young again. So when you use his key power, he becomes a big fucking buff young dude and wrecks your shit. So he's fucking cool. Um, so he just kind of like carries the crusades for a while. He becomes the leader of the Sacred Order of Holy Knights. Um, he fights justice, I think like 17 times, mano y mano, Jesus. and they just fucking go to town. But neither of them can kill each other. Um, and, and another big important thing that happens during the crusades is that our two main characters come into the story. Uh, so Kai Kisk is born near the tail end of the crusades, um, and he's an orphan from the war. And, and uh, he's, like, he's like a good boy. He's, like, he's a very religious... Uh, chaste, uh, ju not, not that justice, but like actual justice, like stands for that shit, um, and very black and white kind of mentality, like you're good or bad. Uh, he has like a really, he's a chivalrous dude, um, you know, he definitely is like a beta orbiter probably, um, but, but he's just a nice boy, and Cliff... Did you put his, it's like, he's a good boy, did you raise his hand? He's a beta orbiter, did you put his hand down? <laughs> <laughs> Question answered. <laughs> and of course, he's my main, so... Uh, no, I couldn't choose anyone else. Ben. Is Kai we're talking about? 
Kai Kisk, yeah. He's my main two. Fuck yeah. yeah. Digi. This is a terrible system, by is the way. Is it really pronounced Kai Kisk and not yes. Kisuke? It's Kisk. Okay. Is it a reference like German, to it? No like idea. Japanese or He's actually uh, French. French, okay. Oh, I will say, just, just to get it out of the way, Guilty Gear Double X has not the first best soundtrack, but this... But the second best soundtrack as well, because Guilty Gear Double X, there's a the international version has a uh, the soundtrack from Daisuke himself, which is fucking amazing. And then for some reason, the Korean release had a totally different soundtrack yeah. from a band that Daisuke was involved with, totally separate soundtrack, just as fucking dope as shit. So Guilty Gear Double X has the first best and second best soundtracks <laughs> of all time. Which of those two is better? I would say probably, you know, I have so much nostalgia for the OG, uh -huh. but the second one's really fucking good too. Fuck. Ben. Why is Daisuke such a hero? <sighs> because... We we needed him. That's like that's like if um He's the if, hero we if need. Kojima were in a metal band on the side and he just like put his his band's music into his yeah. Game I mean and, the good thing about Guilty Gear is it's never hit critical Spread mass. Spread is small. So it's never been ruined. I, I was thinking about Sonic Adventure 2 because the, the, all that music, that Crush 44 band, is like like some friend of the developer and uh, him made a band together. Open made your heart. Yeah. Fucking so sick. Similar to. I love it. Yeah, so um, definitely check those out. If you play Guilty Gear Double X, you've never heard the Korean version, just search it on YouTube. It's so good. Um, okay, but we're, we're still over here. We're not even close to that shit yet. Um, so Kai, born, joins the, the Sacred Order really young. He actually becomes the new head of the Sacred Order of Holy Knights at 16 after Cliff retires. He's a young little boy, but he fucks shit up. He's a super good well, lightning magic user, and you can just fuck gears up bad. Um, so they, the, the Holy Order entrusts him with the Thunder Seal Sword, which is like one of their super powerful, like treasured weapons. And it just enhances lightning magic, makes him even more of a badass. He takes control of the Holy Order and fucks it up. Um, also, around the same time, I think a little, a few years earlier, Soul enters the scene. He's just this dude. He fucks up. He's a bounty hunter. I don't know how you can be a bounty hunter when like, the entire world is like collapsing around you. But I guess people still need gears taken care of, and he's the man for the job. So he's just going around killing gears, and he's becoming like that's he's the bad guy. Everyone's like the gears are just being destroyed. He's the bad guy. I thought, I thought the gears were bad. They I are. thought we wanted to kill the gears. Yeah, but so he's why just, is he a bad guy? He's for a killing bad the guy. He's a badass. Well, Do the well, Gears call him bad guy? I don't know who calls him bad guy. This is all mm. probably retconned after the fact. All right, this is just a Freddie Mercury reference. Freddie first Mercury. Engineered. Freddie Mercury's nickname was Mr. Bad Guy, IRL. Yes. So oh, in, okay. in the same way, he's a bad guy. Okay. And, you know. yeah. yeah. So Soul is just bombing around, fucking shit up. He was born, I don't even remember, um, but he was, he's in the Crusades. He's fucking shit up. Cliff recruits him into the Holy Order even though he's kind of like this loner. He's basically the exact opposite of Kai and Kiss. Like, if you even look at them graphically, Kai's like bright whites and blues, and Soul's are kind of like dirty kind of browns and reds, so they, they, they complement and like each other color-wise and also personality-wise. He doesn't give a fuck about anybody. He'll fuck your shit up. He doesn't give a crap. He's really brass and abrasive. Um, but he joins up the Holy Order anyway because he's like, I want to kill Gears. Let's do it. And he only stays for a little while, but he's like, you guys are all fucking bitches with your holy, like, religious crap i don't like it so he leaves but he steals the fire seal sword on his way out because he's like this is cool and i'm a fire guy so he just steals their sword um and cliff like knows it's going to happen he's like i was just going to give that to you anyway dude so okay later but he still keeps fucking up gears by himself he just they were cramping his style uh so that's where the two main characters kind of come into the story at this point uh so blah 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 blah, blah. more shit happens there's a, a big conclusive battle in 2175 called the battle of rome yes uh, i notice it's 101 years between the Crusades and 2175 when the war ends. So, like, is, is, is like, uh, are those characters, like, very old? Are they there the whole time? Or is they... Cliff, they is born, the Cliff is born 20 years into the war, I believe in 2093. Kai is born way the fuck later. So by the time, oh, by okay. the time Kai's recruited, so, uh, Cliff's in, like, his, like, mid-60s. Okay. He's an old boy. That's okay. why he retires and, and Kai takes over. I wasn't sure if, like, this was implying that people live way longer or They something. don't. Okay. Uh, you get killed by Gears pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So... Okay. Uh, yeah, so in 2175, the Battle of Rome happens. I believe that's the final battle of the, 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 the Crusades. And uh, Sol tries to fight Justice by himself. He puts up a good fight, but weakens her, but doesn't beat her. Then all the Holy Order guys come in, and they're able to seal Justice away 
in an alternate dimension. How? Magic. Fuck if this is how. Mm -hmm. So they do that. And luckily for humanity, all the gears that Justice was controlling immediately cease functioning and collapse on the spot, and the war instantly ends. Hmm. And the war's over, and everyone's happy. And so during this time, basically all of the fucking world is just destroyed. Like, all of Europe is gone except for England and France, so the only countries that survived, white power, I spaced ben. out. Who won? The humans did. Okay. We did it! Yay! USA! 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 Um, USA. The United States is completely destroyed and doesn't oh. exist anymore oh. because all the Mexico, Mexico, <laughs> Mexico, Mexico. Yeah, so it's weird. Later in the series, it kind of comes back, but for a while, it's just a lawless area where America used to be. That's literally referred to as a country. A country. A country. Like you're just in a country. Wait, what's, a, what's a country? The United States. The remnants of the United States are referred to for a while in the canon as just a country. Um, so, because it's bad over there. Because all the gear plants were there making gears were there. So when Justice was like, hey guys, they got fucked pretty hard. Um, so, China's a huge big power now. Uh, Japan is fucking gone. So they kind of round up all the Japanese and put them in like internment camps, like colonies and stuff. And they're kind of like, because they're like kind of powerful, I guess, question mark. But uh, they're also like only a handful of them left, so you don't want them to all get wiped out and shit. So you, you're like obligated to stay in these kind of Japanese internment camps. So oh, oh. once again, America had it right the first you time. You said it's the Japanese who get rounded up. And they do. Protected. Oh, I thought you meant the gears. No, no, no. All the gears are just corpses now. None of them work oh, anymore. None of them. None of them. Okay. Okay. They're all pretty fucked. As, a Japanese, as, a, as an Asian American, I have a deep aversion to internment. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just referencing. It happened again. Thank World you. War Two happened again. Like I said, we 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 finished the job on both counts. We we did that whole panel. Yeah. You Asian Hulk. Okay. So we did that. We killed some shit. We fucked up some robots. Good times were had by all, except for all the death. Um, another thing to mention that kind of happened during the Crusades is that uh, there were other anti-gear weapons developed. Uh, besides just like uh, the thunder steel and the fire steel swords and all that kind of stuff, like those cool kind of weapons, uh, there was there was uh, things called the forbidden beasts. Cool. Yeah, they sound pretty cool, right? Uh, they're like, oh my cock. Ah! Ew. Because no one is allowed. No one's allowed. The forbidden beasts are parasites that are implanted inside a human being. Sounds like my cock. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> ah! <laughs> that eventually kill the host. <laughs> just get it out of your system now um yeah the reason i even bring that up is because two of the characters in uh the guilty gear series zato one and melia rage they both have forbidden beasts um and you have to give up something in order to use a forbidden beast so zato we don't know what melia gave up but zato had to cut out his own eyes in order to accept the forbidden beast eddie into him that's why he wears a belt over his head what does it like do does it um, give you powers yeah like um if you've played the video games like zato's a abilities he has like this like summon that like basically comes off of his shadow and he can like turn his arms into like crazy shit and fuck things up and he, like teleport and things like that that's the forbidden beast like i've played the games but i have no clue why anyone can do anything yeah the that's the th that's zato's forbidden beast named eddie which okay. again is another um iron maiden reference mm. and then uh Melia's forbidden beast is in her hair that's why her hair can like turn into knives and fucking fly around and shit yeah, yeah. um so it's not we we're never explicitly told what Melia gave up in order to get her forbidden beast but it's kind of implied that it was her actual hair because she's scared of going bald uh, that's like one of her canon fears which is weird so i'm assuming her hair is probably just the forbidden beast um but yeah that's a little aside but i'll use auto means there out there now you know um so yeah crusades done uh the world fucked up uh but we're kind of on the upswing now because we don't have to worry about these fucking robot monsters of death anymore. Uh, so, Soul attempts to kill just fails, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Kai retires from the Holy Order because they're disbanded now the war's over and he becomes a high-ranking officer in the International Police Force. Soul just kind of goes off and becomes a bounty hunter again. Cliff retires and just kind of goes and be an old man. Nate. Oh, uh, listen. Just, just on the subject of justice and the Crusades, so I'm just a little confused. Why was justice wanting to, like... Was was their goal to like wipe out humanity? Correct. But uh, I know that like the government that created her did so as a weapon. Yes. And she chose to go back against them. Correct. Did 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 they decide that like all humans were evil as a result of this? I guess so. Okay. It's not exactly made explicit. Okay. She's just big and scary. 
Is Justice still around when the war ends? Uh, she's banished in another dimension. Mm -hmm. So as far as we know, she's bye bye um, for now. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> I know she's a secret character. Yeah, she is a secret character. It's interesting, actually. I was totally fucking confused. Oh, actually, I can't get into that now. It'll be spoilers. But I'll get into that later. Um, okay, so War Ends 2080. We're finally at the first fucking video game of this yeah. goddamn series. Yeah. Video, games. <laughs> video games! Video games! Video games! Video games! Guilty Gear 1. All right. So... There's a rumor floating around on whatever magic Twitter is in the Guilty Gear world that Justice is coming back. That shit's bad. And it's only been five years since the other Crusades. So everyone flips their shit because they don't want Justice to come back because fuck, dude, that was bad enough the first time. Like, almost all the world's destroyed. So in order to, like, quash the rumor, make sure it's not true, or to prepare themselves in case Justice actually does come back, the United Nations uh, forms the Second Holy Order and holds the Holy Order Fighting Tournament! Yay! Because what's a fighting game without a fighting tournament? So they all have to go beat the fuck out of each other in order to prove who's the best guys so they can go fight Justice who may or may not actually even exist yet. Weird premise, but this, there you go, it's a fighting game. That's, so, that's, just like, that's just like when real nations declare war. They just, they get all their armies together so the armies can fight each other for a while before yeah. the real war starts. But if you have guys who can make fireballs, who needs armies anymore? Um, so, Guilty Gear 1, that's, that's, that's the, the basic premise of the game. Um, and shit happens, and you find out at the end of the game, like, this is, like, where the story kind of gets a little weird, because depending on who you play, there's non-canon endings and stuff, so you kind of, kind of, this is where you're going to start piecing shit together and figure out, like, the little strands of actual did happen versus what didn't. Uh, so as far as I'm able to put together in Guilty Gear 1 is that the entire uh, uh, thing was a lie. The tournament was not to, um, to, to find people to fight justice. It was done to uh, revive justice by a guy. Actually, I forgot to mention it in here. In the Crusades, uh, Cliff had an adopted son named Testament, and he was a little bitch, and he wanted to help fight in the Crusades, so he volunteered to get himself turned into a gear, which was a really stupid idea. I don't know why he did that, but he was immediately taken over by Justice and started killing people, and Cliff had to kill his own son. Oh. Bad day. By justice? He had... He took to over by justice. Yeah, he he volunteered because there was there's a there's an organization called the Post War Administration Bureau, which was around during the war. So I don't know why they're the Post War Administration Bureau, um, but they they were trying to experiment with gear technology. They also created the Forbidden Beasts, but they also turned Testament into a gear to try and see if they could make their own gears to fight gears. Didn't work out so well for him. Uh, immediately brainwashed, and he had to be killed. By Cliff, but he's not actually dead. He was the one who started the tournament because he's trying to sacrifice strong fighters to break the seal and bring justice back because justice is his guy now. Um, so uh, uh, Cliff is Cliff's in the tournament, Soul's in the tournament, Kai's in the tournament, all the other guys from the first game are in the tournament. None of them matter. Only these three matter. Um, so I guess Cliff finds his son and can't fight him or something. Uh, so, so somebody fights. It depends on who you play as. Somebody fights Testament and beats him. And he's like, fuck, what if I'm the final sacrifice to break the seal for justice instead? Why did I waste all my time doing a, a, a fucking tournament? So he sacrifices himself and revives justice. Justice is back only five years later. That's bad. So uh, Cliff shows up on the scene. He's like, fuck, I got to fight justice again. So he tries, but he's so fucking old now that he can't even keep up, even with his key powers. So he gets fucking killed by justice this time and kai is pissed because that was his mentor he brought him into the order so he gets pissed he fights justice and he loses too but he doesn't die because he's important uh so then soul bombs in and is like fuck your shit i'm gonna take you down now so they fucking throw down soul is able to beat justice but during the fight soul has this like, like headband thing and it gets broken and during the fight he has a marking on his forehead that is the same symbol that is on justice and it revealed that Soul is a gear himself. And Justice is like, what the fuck, dude? Like, if you're a gear, I should control you. Why don't you start killing those guys instead? He's like, I can't because you are the first gear and you can control all gears made after you. But I'm the prototype gear. Soul bad guy is Frederick from all the way fucking back oh. here. Oh. And that's why, again, Freddie back. Mercury. Yes, that's Freddie the whole Mercury. thing. Freddie Mercury. Oh. Yeah. yeah, it's a totally telegraphed, and you missed it. Shit! So, Soul Bad Guy is oh, Frederick. So, he's been bombing around, doing shit this whole time, wrecking that man's shit. <laughs> and he comes over to here, and he's finally ready to finish the job and kill Justice dead as fuck. I'm losing my mind. 
dude, it's fucking dope. And he <laughs> and so, he he does it. So in in the first the first video game in the series, there is a comeback of a character that you have no idea who he is. Correct. <laughs> All of this is not in here, okay. except for what I'm saying right now. So, so uh, I, I guess in the context of Guilty Gear One, what we would see is there's just a character named Soul who you know is like a rough and tumble guy, and then he, he just is revealed to like be, to be have a connection. He's to even justice. a cooler guy, right? Okay, right. okay. So he fucking t he's like I I'm so he is he is the prototype gear, and he's also the guy who fucking like is partially responsible for this entire fucking thing because his research with that man is what caused this entire catastrophe to happen in the first place. And his inability to kill Justice back in the day resulted in all this shit happening now. So, Soul Bad Guy is the guilty gear. Oh. Oh. And that is where, because he's the main protagonist, that's where the name comes from. Oh, no. Now you know. He's the guilty gear. Um, and and Justice's, <laughs> Justice's dying words to Soul is, I'm really sad. I wish the three of us could have spoken together one last time. Implying oh, 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 that oh, it's, Justice it's, is it's, Arya. Ah! So he just fucking murked his girlfriend who was responsible for all this shit. And he swears vengeance on that man, that motherfucker. And that's the end of Guilty Gear 1. Munchie. Wait, 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 wait. wait. What, why is he motherfucker? Because that man turned his girlfriend, his dying girlfriend, into this monster oh, gear. That man oh, that just himself later. Yes. Later on, after she died. Yeah. So, oh, like with her like corpse, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Some, yeah, it's not clear. It's not exactly clear. There's, there's a couple retcons that change how exactly it was done. Oh, <laughs> what a man. What a man. You could say he's that man. Yeah. He's that kind of man. So you can kind of see, he's not exactly, not exactly the best guy. And that's the end of Guilty Gear 1. Soul's pissed. Um, and and, every, and, and, and uh, fucking Cliff is dead. Sad, sad how, times. How, 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 how does my man Kai feel about all this? Um, he's kind of pissed because they were rivals during the Crusades and stuff. And he kept trying to beat Soul just like in duels. He's like a chivalrous, he's like a knight. He's like, Soul, I challenge you to a duel. I don't want to kill you, but I just want to beat you as a better swordsman. He can never do it. Now he's like, fucking that's why. Kai must feel like a real asshole losing to justice before Soul steps in. He's kind of perpetually cucked for, for the most of the mm. series. Mm. Until about here when shit starts getting pretty weird. But we'll get to that. Um, yeah, so that's the end of Guilty Gear, Guilty Gear 1. Anybody? Are we good? Can we, we can move on. I think I got it. Ben. Why didn't they end it right here while they were at <laughs> Because actually, this is probably the least fun Guilty Gear fighting game. They, they just get better that's until here. And then they kind of just, they kind of just balance out. Because this, this is ostensibly the greatest fighting game of all time. Um, I, that's totally my nostalgia talking, but I'm going to stand by it anyway. I agree. It's so, it's so I good. Never I only played X. X is good. This, this makes everything better. Mm. Everything. Mm. Even they, even the, X, all of the, the music, it's the same score between X and double X, but this one was all done with synthesized instruments. They re-record everything with live instruments and it sounds so much juicier. It's amazing. I hate that fucking soundtrack. It sucks dick. Everyone's like, "Oh, Marvel's so good. Fuck Marvel. This is way better." Get out of my get out of my lecture hall. I just I grew up around a bunch of Marvel fags, and to this day, I have a chip on my shoulder. Those sprites were bullshit in Marvel. They were all pulled from different games. They were all pixelated and gross, and they looked awful. You can come back. Say Marvel versus Capcom? Yeah, Marvel's Capcom. Like, all those sprites were, like, different resolutions and stretched and... Oh, God. I'm going to take you for a ride after class. All right. Um. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not afraid of, of, of uh, student-teacher relationships, all right? Especially when they're non-consensual. <laughs> then I'm extra confident. All right. If only one person consents, only half the crime has been committed. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> where, where, did, where did we go so wrong? Um, all right. 2181. The next. Settle down, class! Okay, all right. This is important. Sorry, I was on a ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take you on a ride here. This is a, this is a, this is a, this is a ride. This is when shit starts getting really weird. This was pretty straightforward compared to everything else we're about to tackle. All right. All Guilty right. Gear X. Oh, 
So this, the, the story of Guilty Gear X star, starts in like this small village town in a country, Munchie. Guilty Gear X? What happened in 2 through 9? Yeah, good question. You know, 2 is right down here. Uh, oh! <laughs> sure. Is that true? Yes, it's Guilty Gear 1, which is just called Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear X, Guilty Gear Double X, Guilty Gear 2, then Guilty Gear x So, So the games are ordered in, in, in this chronological is, order, yes. not release order. Both. Oh. This is the release order and the chronological uh, order. Uh, uh, what? Uh, uh, all right. It's <laughs> too normal. I don't okay. The, the reason we're going to get to it, but the reason Guilty Gear 2 is called some is, is 2 is because this isn't a fighting game. Oh. This is a totally different kind of game, and it's really bad. Okay. It has like a 4 on Metacritic and with good reason. Mm -hmm. But I had to suffer through the whole thing and pay $25 for it. Is that why they like went back to X's is so people would know? Like, Correct. Hey, so, uh, this is tied to the fighting games. This is, this is gone. <laughs> This is still completely plot net mandatory. You will not understand anything here unless you play this, which is why I played these two. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Nate. D does the XR, is that, is that like, th like third? Like yeah. Three like three RD? Yeah, okay. because if it was Guilty Gear XXX, it would never be able to be sold. Um, but funnily, oh, right. this is called <laughs> Guilty Gear Double X in Japan, but in America it was released as Guilty Gear X2. Yeah. Because X2, it, was, it was a little, yeah. too, a little too hot for that early uh, 2000s sensibilities. Right. That gay panic. Yeah, yeah. The, the one that I had was Guilty Gear X2 number sign, hashtag reload. Yes. So you know how... It's the, X, the Xbox <laughs> version of the game. The so it was just like the Xbox release <clears throat> of XX. Why would they change the Well, game? here's the thing. Because you I know, think they you know added how, some extra shit to it. You know how, like, there's Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo... Yes. They have this with with both of these games. Like okay. Guilty Gear gets the first yeah, one's Guilty Gear. There's a lot of releases of X2. There's Guilty Gear XX, The Midnight Carnival. That's yeah. the first one. Then it's Guilty Gear XX Sharp Reload, because um, it's it's all musical themes, so it's like a sharp yeah. and music. Then it's Guilty Gear XX Accent Core. Then there's Guilty Gear XS Accent Core Plus. And Accent Core Plus adds a whole new story mode, and we're gonna get to that oh, because shit. I hate that fucking shit. Oh. Yeah, it's bad. Okay. Okay, but we're still we're still up here in Guilty Gear X one. Mm. Guilty technically Guilty Gear X. The second, it's fucking stupid. More video game, go now. <laughs> okay, so Guilty Gear X starts in a small uh, village town in a country. America, no more, I guess. Uh, they're just doing their shit. And this old couple find a abandoned infant somewhere. This is all text logs, bear with me. Um, so they find this small child and they adopt her as their own. Um, and they realize very quickly this girl is not normal because within three years she goes from an infant to a fully grown adult. Um, and this is the telltale sign of a gear because gears mature insanely quickly. Munchie. How do you tell her, her, her age of consent whether it's for the real <laughs> years or for how mature she is? Or... Oh, well, there is a lot of porn of this character. There is a ton. She is, she is the waifu of this game series. Well, j just like uh, in real life, yeah, this you, is this you, is you just look at a body and you and one, you ask yourself if she's asking for it or not. That's all you got. Let me do. put it to you this way: a gear is mature at three years old. Uh, <laughs> we've done it. <laughs> Thank you, Daisuke. Uh, uh, just a small question of chronology. Is it in, in 2181 where this character is fully grown, or are they found here? And then in, like, 2183... She's found three years before. How, okay. How okay. old is she in this and you know what Gears like to do? Five. What? Grind. Die. Gears like to grind. That's oh, what they do. Grind. That doesn't yeah, yeah. Look Age five. What are you talking that about? That looks stupid. Yeah, this look, looks like an overdesigned piece of trash. Yeah, it looks <laughs> pretty well, she, She's yeah. like my least favorite character in the Well, in whatever, the man. She's overdesigned, and that's why all the fucking weebs love her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I prefer Bridget. She's like Bridget. the most popular and worst design. Are time. you serious about Bridget? No. Okay, good. <laughs> I was going to say, I have a pro there's a problem with that. I like the Just, girl with the hat. May? Hat. No, oh, oh, Eno. I, Eno. Eno, yeah. Eno's a babe. Munchie. I like King Dedede. I can do a side B really well. I can angle them very nicely. <laughs> I think King Dedede could wreck everybody in this series. No, no problem. So, yeah, that's a good choice. He's got a fucking hammer. Yeah. What do these have? Fucking morals? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. We're done. We're going. <laughs> Okay. All right, go, 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 go. Okay, okay. so okay. she starts aging. She's a full-grown adult. Then she sprouts these two wings and a tail, and they're like, fuck, That's it's a gear. Uh, Shit. 
So they hide her in a forest because they, they, it's like they're still their, her, their daughter, I guess. Sorry, like, who's, who's daughter? These, this random old couple that has no bearing on the story whatsoever other than framing the plot of Guilty Gear X. Oh, yeah. um, they just found her. They just found they just her. Found her. She's very loose. Uh, so they find her. She's they hide like, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you disgust me. <laughs> Did you? Loosest three-year-old I ever saw. That's I, for sure. I would think that they... Not she, me. I, <laughs> Shut the fuck up! I think her story is probably a reference to, like, the tale of Princess Kaguya, the classic Japanese know. folk tale. Oh, that's way more interesting than what I was saying. <laughs> I don't... It is. I'm Have not, you not seen... You don't know anything about that? You uncultured fucking swine! <laughs> Boo! All right. But... <laughs> anyway... So they hide her away in this grove, uh, but eventually word gets out that she's there, and it's a, she's another commander gear, like, like Justice, oh, which is bad news. So yeah. she can, not only is she a commander gear, she can command other gears, but she has the weird ability to be able to revive downed gears. So she can resurrect all the corpses that are just kind of hanging around that we haven't taken care of yet, because it's only been a couple of years, and that's a lot of shit to get through. Was Justice the only commander gear before? Get as far as we close. know. As far as we know, yes. No one wants to hand you Don't that. give it to... Don't, don't fucking giggling like that. Give me that fucking microphone. <laughs> don't. Oh, no. oh, shit. God damn it. If she can revive down gears, can she cure my down syndrome? <laughs> <laughs> That's not where... All right, there you go. <laughs> no. No one... No one can cure that. <laughs> All right, well, um... I don't think anyone can figure Johnson at this point. <laughs> the man who wrote I'm gay on his thighs <laughs> is asking... Him. So that he could read it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, difference, <laughs> the difference between Nate on, like, being the professor and being the student is so <laughs> bad. Yeah, it's, okay. it's bad. I'm, I apologize. Demerit. Just warranted. Yeah. <laughs> So, fucking, they find that Dizzy is this commander gear who can revive down gears. Big fucking problem. Yuan's like, $500,000 bounty on her head? That'll take care of her right quick. And it's pretty low. But then again, this I mean, is this probably, is, this is a reba rebounding economy for uh, sure this, when you think about this it. This is 2081 money. 2181. 20, this is 2181 money. Inflation. Um, is there really... There, if, like, all of Europe is gone, there had the Dow had to crash, like, at least ten points. <laughs> so that's, that's, the, that's the bounty. Dow syndrome crashed again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he did it, guys. Yeah, so I don't know how they figure out how she has these abilities. She's kind of hiding in a forest somewhere. Um, one, of those, one of those interesting dice gay logic things. Uh, so that's what happens. All these fucking bounty hunters just dogpile on what used to be America, trying to track this bitch down. Um, and so, of course, Kai... Remember the international police force, he kind of has to go in there and clean shit up. Uh, and then Soul's like, money? Yes, please. So he ends up there, too. And then all the other characters from the game, they go there for their own stupid bullshit reasons that don't matter to canon at all. With a couple exceptions that I'm not going to ignore. Munchie. Real, real question, not, not a joke meme. So these are like fighting games, right? Correct. So like, how is this lore dispensed? Okay, so in Guilty Gear X, you get um, little text kind of things at the end of the like you fight eight guys and then gives you a couple sentences and that's their story <laughs> and then the rest is all in wikis and like expanded and like Wait, well where's the wiki get get yeah yeah it's from somewhere i was about to, there's there's like 20 drama cds two novels <gasps> oh an entire comic there's a lot of supplementary material that fleshes a lot of this out i've done a lot of groundwork here oh okay so normally that, like, like it, you have like you know like a main series, and you have like supplementary canonical materials that's just like for the fans. Yes. So basically, in the Guilty Gear games, there is no real story; it's just kind of a bunch of bullshit. Not until this point where we start getting story, but unfortunately, they can't tell stories, as we'll find I mean, out. In, 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 the thing about Guilty Gear's story, like especially X Two, you'll play through story mode, and every few matches, like oh, we'll get whoever there. you're fighting will oh. have a dialogue with you. Yeah. But they all speak in strange, like almost riddle text, and they all just reference this story as though you know what's going right. on, but it is never explained to you. So every right. time you watch a cutscene, you're literally just sitting there like, what yeah. is fucking going on? Because they, in Guilty Gear Double X, they talk about that man and justice and all this shit. All the time. All the time. And if, and if I didn't tell, tell you, you you'd be like, who the fuck is that I literally man? have played like hundreds of hours of Guilty Gear X2 and did not know who that man is. I Honestly, this was the, the only game I played. I like basically brunt force my way into understanding this. I just played it so much I started putting things together and it was really stupid. 
but yeah, um, yeah. So 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 everyone's trying to kill Dizzy to get their money because that's just how we roll. Um, and so I guess you know, again, depending on which character you play, shenanigans happen. Any anybody in the cast can fight Dizzy, but canonically, it's Sol and Kai who end up there because they're the only boys that matter. Um, so Kai gets there first, fights her, and loses again. He's like the Vegeta of this series, really. He's like if Vegeta was a nice guy and, like, gayer. That's pretty much who Kai is. So then Soul bombs in and fights. But the thing is is that Dizzy is being guarded by Testament, the guy who ran the first Guilty Gear tournament, who should have been killed there, who should have been killed here. Yeah. Somehow he's dodged death twice and has not been explained why, but he's alive again and he's protecting Dizzy because she's a commander gear like Jess is and he feels responsible for her because he fucked up up here. Munchie. Oh yeah, again, because these are fighting games, there are more than two playable characters, right? There's like a whole roster. There's, I think there's somewhere around 20, and then there's like 25 here. Are any of them cool? First of all, are they cool? Second of all, do they matter? They are all yes cool. Yes and yes. Yeah, okay. they do matter. There's a lot of stuff, that, there's a lot of supplementary B stories that I've cut well, from all this already. Only a few of them really matter for, for the main stuff we're talking about here, right? By the time you get around here, some of them do matter a little bit more. Okay. Um, but no, no, not for the most part. Um, there is a guy named Faust who's pretty cool. He's like a nine foot tall, super lanky guy who wears a paper bag on his head, wields a giant scalpel, and his special ability is to shove his fingers up your ass. I like, that's just what I do every Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> he's, pretty, he's pretty cool. <laughs> so, yeah, this, the, the, the big selling point of this, besides like just having the best soundtrack of any game ever made in history, is that the characters are fucking. Insane. Like, Sol and Kai, they're normal boys. They're just guys with swords. Like, everything, there's like vampires, there's a guy who controls his shadows, a girl who controls his hair, there's Faust, there's Bridget, which is like this, like, uh, little nun girl who's actually a boy and you don't know and it's not really told. That's interesting. Ben? I'm just, I'm sorry if I, to divert for a second, but I'm curious, like, how many of us have, have played Guilty Gear? I was wondering, I'm curious, like, who everyone's favorite characters is, because I really like Kai and Milia and Faust. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm just curious, Tom. Are you going to talk about Chip Zanuf at all in this um, lecture? I might touch on him a tiny bit in Revelator. If so, then uh, can I just tell Munchie why he's cool? Yeah, go for it. It's just okay. So here you've got a, a, an American boy who is on like the mean streets. Say no more. Of, like I don't know. Some he is American the best. City he's, or he's fucking great. He was. I think he was adopted by some Japanese couples. And as we know, the Japanese people are like super gods in the world of Guilty Gear. He is. He is canonically the biggest weave in the world. He grows up like all his attacks are based on Japanese shit, even though he is not Japanese himself, and he's pretty much a total poser. And later on, he goes to run for president of the United States of America, which I believe he. Wins, but I, I he actually I starts his own country. He starts his own country, and be, and, but he still runs for election of his own country. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> you've got yeah. kind of cucking he's himself. He's called. He's, it's called like the chip, like the the Eastern Chip Kingdom. Yeah, and like his like subordinate's name's Answer, and he's always like, "Why are you?" You're elected president. It's not a kingdom. He's like, but it sounds cooler. <laughs> and that's just the end of the discussion. He is my favorite. He's like, also, he used to be a drug addict, then he became a ninja. Like yeah. he's, this, he has a, a mentor who taught him how to be a ninja. And the way his training was that, this was in uh, a, a novel. There's a whole novel about Chip, which I want to read because he's the coolest guy. And like his training was just like, you have to like, chase a bird in a forest. So he just like, he's raised a bird into a forest. He's like, chase after. And that's how he gets super fast. Because his gimmick is he's yeah. stupid fast. Yeah, I feel I feel the need to mention that there, this, these games have a strong sense of humor, and a lot of the side characters are like yeah. their stories are a lot more goofy or just like fun and whimsical. There's one girl who uh, May who just carries a gigantic fucking um, anchor anchor that she fights with. She's like this tiny little girl in a pirate hat who carries a giant anchor, and she like lives on a, 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 a pirate like a, ship, a flying pirate ship. Jellyfish. The um, jellyfish pirates, yep. And is like sur with almost all girls as the crew, and it's it, she's, they're all, she they're literally all girls. is like her that pirate crew just is like a cute girls yeah. Yuri bait anime that is, is just in the background. Well, of it's actually Air. it's kind of a harem because Johnny's the captain, and he's just this like yeah. twenty year old guy that doesn't wear a shirt. And, and he's, he's, a, he's super a, badass. He's also American. Yeah. And he's voiced by Norio Wakamoto, who's a seventy-something-year-old Japanese yeah. man. Yeah. He's super fucking cool. And all there's like all the the members of the Jellyfish Pirates are named after a month of the year. That's right. So there's May, the yeah. One. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that the guy reason. Fucks. That guy 
guy. He definitely, definitely fucks. fucks. And the reason I think May fucks all those other girls too. I think they uh, there's a lot of that's like, definitely gay some hinting. headcanon shit. Uh, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot of like Yuri goggles going on with May and all those fucking girls. Okay. They're always hugging. May, and shit. Maybe April. Maybe April and May are fucking. Say, Johnny and his sexy submissive sluts are the greatest characters in the series. Yeah, pretty pretty much. It's just really when like when they show up, you feel like some anime mm. about these characters has just landed in Guilty Gear. And like yeah. a lot of the well, side characters are like you have that. To, Johnny wears this big, long, black trench coat. He wears like a black hat. He has sunglasses on, kind of like Nate's, but all black. Mm-hmm. No shirt. Fucking abs for days. <laughs> and just walk, and he has like a fucking like long sword and he just fucks people up. He's probably with a wooden sword? It's, it's, a, a cane, it's like a cane sword. Yeah, he, have to, he has to draw it every time he uses it. There's, yeah, it's a certain, does he, like, flip coins or He something? does. You can toss coins at people, and that, like, amplifies your sword strikes. And it's pretty cool. Mm. He's fun to play as. A lot of cool characters, though. Yeah, this, this is like the... I could do a whole other lecture just on uh, the characters. I play a slayer. Slayer's dope. He's a vampire. He's a vampire who can, like... He's, he's a very charismatic vampire who... Uh, very who always, classy. He always shows up with, like, some chick on his arm who he'll just, just like, wife. drain just to wife. nothing. Yeah, the first thing he does away. every match is he sucks the blood out of his wife, drains her to nothing, tosses away her empty corpse, and then starts fucking well, you okay, up. Well, it's she's immortal, so it's good. Yeah, she she's fine. She, loves every, every, she survives every match. I it's fucking good. love Slayer so much. Yeah. She's the dope. coolest character He just fights with his bare hands. He's a vampire. doesn't need weapons. We're totally getting off the plot, but that's fine. I'm just curious. Are we going to talk at all Wait, why during are this vampires by the way Oh, I was, I was just going to say, are, are we going to talk about... Uh, That's why. Are, are we going to talk about uh, the, the interconnectivity with uh, Blaze Blue at all? No. I've okay, never, well, I've, can I, if, no. To, to answer that question, as I understand... I have, like, a, I, I have a chip on my shoulder about Blaze Blue as well. Interesting. Uh, I, I could be wrong about this, but I believe that vampires in the Guilty Gear world are a literal like higher being from a higher plane of existence. That's kind of how they're implied to be. Right. And and uh, if you remember, Rachel Alucard is the vampire in Blaze Blue. It is implied that she and Slayer are from the same place, and that they just have come down to two different worlds: one of Guilty Gear and one of Blaze. Yeah, Blue. there is some like I believe that's the connection. implied connections, but yeah. I don't know. I, I was super mad when Blaze Blue came out because I thought it was replacing Guilty Gear, uh, and for like I the same for like. The better part of a decade it did, so I refused to play it out of just spite. And then when they had, the, and it was funny because like XRD came out in 2014, and in 2013 the first trailer came out. And I was talking to my friend who's like a big fighting game buff, and I was just talking about Guilty Gear. I was like, I really wish they'd make another Guilty Gear game. And he's like, Oh, they are. Like, I don't care about like Accent Core Double Plus Faggotry. I mean, like a real game. He's like, No, they are. And then I, we were all on a call on Skype. And I watched the trailer and started crying on yeah. call because it was the greatest thing I'd ever seen in my life. How long was the gap between like real releases? <sighs> like ten years or something? Well, yeah. Double X what came out. That, Double X came out first, I believe, in two thousand two. XR came out in twenty fourteen. So there was a bunch of like subsequent releases. There's also Guilty Gear two, but fuck that game because hmm. it doesn't matter. But so granted, was, there were like like seven. Ba- a bajillion then. re-releases of Double X, but that doesn't count. Mm-hmm. You know. With story alterations. Yeah. Okay. So, what about this gay story we were talking about? Um, so, did they? Uh, they were fighting Dizzy, I believe. Yeah. Did so, they, yeah. Testament was there guarding her. They have to beat him up first. Uh, they ki- they 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 beat the shit out of Testament again. Then they fight Dizzy. And for some reason, uh, Dizzy is a Commander Gear, but she's a pacifist. She's a little girl. She's been raised by nice old people. She doesn't want to fuck up humans at all. She's she's a nice girl. She's she's cool. She's nice. She's cute. She's a waifu. She doesn't want to do anything. She just wants to be left alone. And so even she ends up having to fight Soul anyway for like self defense. And he's just like, you know what? Fine. You're not a threat. I won't kill you. And he's like, Kai, you deal with her. And he just bombs out. And so Kai's like, fuck, I don't want to kill her either because I'm a, I'm a nice guy. I'm a good, just guy. Uh, so he decides to uh, have her go with Johnny and the Jellyfish Pirates. Why you would leave a three-year-old underdeveloped woman with a woman? With a man who fucks. Yeah. <laughs> Inter- it's an interesting choice to say the least. But that's who he decides to leave her in the custody of. And then they report... Dizzy as dead and Jam Karadoberry, this random like Chinese key user who like yeah. wants to open a restaurant. She gets she's credited with killing Dizzy and she uses the money to open up her, a new restaurant. Oh yeah! yeah. That's yeah. the coolest shit this entire fucking series <laughs> so far. Yeah, she's pretty cool. Jam is awesome. She's also you. super hot. Yeah. I, no. I want to note that uh, the reasoning why Kai left him, you got to think about it. Kai Kisuke probably, first of all, doesn't know anything about sex. No. And second of all, probably just thought, well, there's lots of girls there, so it must be a great place for girls. I mean, I wouldn't even put it past him. Johnny, well, we joke, but Johnny's a good man. No, he's, he's a good boy. He honestly, like, you can joke about him fucking, but he really sees the crew as his daughters yeah. than, than, yeah. than his sluts. 
especially May. No, he does those call them the sect of submissive sluts. Those, exclusive. Those, those are not mutually exclusive. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's true. You've got to repopulate the Earth somehow. Um, yeah, so that's the end of Guilty Gear X. That's how it kind of wraps up in a nice pretty bow. Um, then we get to 2181 again, because this takes place less than a year after Guilty Gear X. It's Guilty Gear Double X. I don't know. <laughs> this game is fucking confusing as shit. And the reason is that up until Guilty Gear 1, Guilty Gear 2, all this shit, it's like a straight line, right? It's just like uh, technology gets fucked. Uh, we make robots. We fight the robots. We beat the robots. We beat the robots again. We beat the robots again. Mm-hmm. Pretty simple. This, there are, between Guilty Gear X and Axon Core Plus, they have a speci- uh, an actual story mode with branching Uh, paths for each character and there are over 500 scenarios and only less than a third of those are canon but uh, okay yeah so dissecting what the fuck happens in this game is a titanic undertaking munchy wait wait. so so i'm confused on some uh, basic point sure you keep uh, gears are monsters or are they robots they're 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 basically monsters they're they're like they're technologically bioengineered organisms well uh, but they're the robots sounds funny they're just like genetically modified shit they're not actually robots okay Okay. this is 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 like gmo's gone too far dude okay 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 now i completely understand cool okay yeah so a lot of shit happens in double x uh there's the really to even it's kind of I'm going to get like crucified for saying this because like somebody out there you who's watching it right now who's already has like a paragraph long comment about all the little things I've left out from here <laughs> you're going to like eviscerate me for saying this right now but this game is kind of a nothing burger there's a lot of things that are established and there's a couple little good bits but there's just a lot of fluff in this game there's a lot of things that happen that are that are kind of inconsequential other than a couple few key points that it develops. Uh, it establishes the post-war administration bureau, which is like Guilty Gear's Illuminati. Like, uh, because this is the first game that has an actual story mode. All of this was like arcade mode and like, uh, you know, subsequent like releases and like supplemental content. This game has a dedicated story mode. And in each story mode, it, when you pick a character, it's like a dossier on that character from the post-war administration bureau, which is like the big bad of this game. Uh, they're spying on everybody. They're trying to develop new weapons tech. They're, again, they're the ones who developed the Forbidden Beasts and turned Testament into a gear. So they're already pretty hot shit, but they just want to control stuff. And like that's kind of the theme for the rest of these games, is there's another thing that wants to control everything, and we keep going up the chain. So the, the post-war administration bureau is established here. They're the first big bads. And... They have some weird ideas. Like, the Forbidden Beasts already kind of a shitty idea. Like, let's just make a parasite that kills the host eventually because reasons. Already pretty bad. Um, in Guilty Gear Double X, for some reason, they say, hey, Kai Kisk is a pretty good fighter. What if we just made a bunch of robot duplicates of him? Oh, RoboKai. So yeah. RoboKai comes in from... Uh, so that's where he comes yeah, from. He's I a, always wonder. He's a creation of the post-war administration bureau. They're trying to make an army based on Kai because he's pretty strong. Um, <laughs> ben, why not make an army of souls? Because soul is demonstrably better. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. I would think they just have less information on him because yeah. Kai was like deeply embedded in the system. All those. Yeah, things. I mean, he's already been part of the international police force forever. A big part of Kai's story is like, why are there robot me's running around? And then a bunch of other characters are just like, hey, you just stole from my restaurant, man. And it's like, no. I'm not a robot. Yeah. yeah, worth mentioning that like some of the character motivations in these game are as simple as like literally like Jam Jam who is largely irrelevant to the story. She's is usually really like ditzy. someone trashed my restaurant and therefore I must fight uh, a yeah. thousand powerful her, people in order yeah, to Yeah, her motivation is pretty much exclusively back. my restaurant got fucked and I'm going to fuck up the person every, responsible. Or, or like some I think yeah. in Cern it's like uh <laughs> like someone's like flirting with her waitress and being an asshole and that's why she just like starts kicking ass yeah pretty yeah much. It's, it's very there's a lot of great like sillies going on outside the main plot which would probably be a more entertaining lecture but this is serious shit all these others are fucking government that's that's guilty gear suckers. 102 yeah exactly only dizzy is an entrepreneur businesswoman that's why she's you mean, the only one i, I mean jam. 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 jam art of the dress art of the dress art of the dress art yeah. of the dress um Shit. Okay, so yeah, that the post-war administration bureau does that, and then in in uh, Accent Core Plus, which is the 
point where they add another story mode, their motivation there is you, there's actually a guy on screen who's actually interacting with the characters now. His name's Crow. He's kind of a weird, ugly-looking guy. And he just cr- decided to make some weaker robot clones of Justice for everybody to fight. It's just an excuse to have Justice's sprite be part of the story now. Um, and everybody beats him up. So, so they're, they're bad guys. They're trying to like do bad things, and they, they're watching you while you fap. That's, that's the post-war administration bureau. Uh, the other big thing that happens in Double X is that um, Eno is introduced, and she's like the hottest character in, in the game, probably. Um, she's the, also the final boss of all the, like, the arcade mode and the story modes, for the most part. And uh, she's a servant of that man. We don't know anything really about her. We don't even know if she's human. We don't know what she is. Uh, she apparently has time travel powers, uh, which I guess non-canonically she accidentally extended the Crusades 10 years in an alternate timeline and then that man's like, fix that shit. She's like, okay, and goes back and unfucks fucks that up. Ben. I may have missed something, but that man is still alive? Oh, he is. is he, I guess that means he's a gear? We don't know. He's very mm. old, at least, I guess. Mm. There is a point... We'll get to it. I guess we never established that Gears live that long. Gears do well, not die. They, do. they are undying. Yeah. Oh. They can live forever. Pay attention. So, I mean, when you think about it, Soul was already an adult in 2014, and now we're all the way over here, and he's still bombing around. Riveted. And he's... he's he also, he's also, like, way buffer than he used to be. He got fucking... Soul is? Yeah, sw- Soul got swole. Oh, like swole. Yeah, exactly. Ah, you know I just said that. You, you, well, you. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> so, it was... It, it, yeah, they they around forever. We don't know what the fuck's going on with Eno, but she just goes around and fucks everyone's shit up. And, like, the, the most, like, big deals, like, the most menial shit. Like, Bridget, she's just like, hey, hey, little boy, you want to be a bounty hunter? Here's a list of bounties that are all fake, so you can just fuck with all the other characters in the game, because I want to. Nate. Well, I've got a chance to ask. What's the deal with Potemkin? Oh, Potemkin is he? He's a he was a slave in a in a aerial city called Zep, and so Zep is he like Russian or something? <sighs> Maybe. Okay, whatever. The whole you would think so. <clears throat> yeah. All his... all of the fucking everything's a big melting pot now because all the, tra- the traditional nations kind of got mixed together in this like big calamity. So everybody's kind of everywhere now. It's a liberal cucks dream at this point. Um, but yeah, Potemkin, he was a slave in this aerial city called Zep. And Zep, uh, they broke away from the United Nations all the way back here when uh, magic started being a thing. They were like, fuck you. We like our iPhones. We're keeping them. Oh. So they made their whole own country that just really advanced so regular a, technology. So there's a civilization that actually rejected the entire rejection of technology. Yes. Oh, cool. So there's a big floating city that's like fucking massive, like a country-sized floating city going around called Zep. Do they have issues with that alien force that was, you know, trying to like take over the technology? That was the reason. Not that they... clear. They don't go into it all that much. I'm assuming okay. they probably dodged that bullet for the most part, but it's not exactly made clear. Okay. Not a lot is known about the Crusades in general, other than what I said here. Mm. Digi. Um, outside of having caused everything, is that does that life form coming through technology ever come up again? Yes. Okay. We'll get to it. Oh. Yeah. Is, um, that, is that all there is to say about Potemkin? He's just, he works for well, the military? Well, he's, 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 he was a slave, and it's because they, for, Zep was established to reject magic, but eventually, like, their society kind of, like, gave into it anyway, and it turned into, like, this really bad, like, dystopian, like, aristocracy, and he was raised as a slave mm-hmm. in Zep. And then eventually this guy named Gabriel is like, fuck that, this is bullshit, Magic's bad. Look what it did to our country. So he starts an insurrection against the aristocracy of Zep. And Potemkin is like his right-hand man. He, like, frees <laughs> Potemkin. Like, Potemkin, you don't... For anybody who hasn't played Guilds of Gear, he's like this huge, fucking, incredible Hulk he's mountain a of a man. Bitch. Yeah. And, and it's canon that he has a genetic disorder that makes him just super swole. Uh, right. And, like, his... Because his, he has these little tiny stub legs and just, like, a Hulk top body. Um, so he helps Gabriel overthrow the government and they establish a new republic that's based solely on technology. And now he's just Gabriel's buddy and they go around and they do their shit. That's Potemkin. So he must be that guy who appears at Potemkin at the beginning when, when Potemkin loads in a match. There's like a guy next. Yeah, the guy who just kind of like salutes him and takes off yeah. with a big nose. Yeah. That's Gabriel. Cool. He, gets, he, gets a, he gets a whole fight scene in XR and fucks shit up. It's oh, pretty so. cool. <laughs> he's like super powerful. Um, yeah, so that's Potemkin. I don't know what we were talking about. Double X. Yeah, Eno... She's uh, a real bitch. She's a total cunt. Uh, she hates everybody, and she just fucks everything up. Uh, she's the final boss. She's super broken, but 14-year-old me was kind of okay with it because every time she wins, she turns around and takes her shirt off. You can kind of see a side, side boob. boob. So it made it a little bit more tolerable that I was getting my ass handed to me 
constantly. That was kind of cool. Uh, but she's a servant of that man. And her kind of motivation is that all of these people are opposing that man. So I'm just going to go down here. I'm going to fuck them up. Because if I get rid of them, then that man's shit's going to go better. And uh, eventually, Soul beats Eno because she fucks with everybody. But she specifically hates Soul because Soul specifically hates that man. So they 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 clash. Gib. I forget. Uh, that man is the bad guy. Yes, he's the gear maker. He's the guy who uh, started made, the Crusades, made justice, and used to be Soul's friend when he was Frederick. Is he part of the secret Illuminati thing? He is not part of the post-war administration bureau. He has his own gang of dudes who are doing their own shit, and we still don't know what the fuck they're doing at this point. We're gonna get to them down here. I know it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason I literally have done nothing for the last three weeks, but just go through all of this. Um, yeah, so Eno's total cunt fucks shit up, soul beats her up, and then that man bombs in. It's like the first like canonical appearance of that man ever is in Double X, and he just kind of appears. He's like this guy in these big fucking robes. You can't see his face, um, and he's like, Eno, you dumb bitch. I am controlling everything that's happening right now. All of them were doing exactly what I wanted, and you fucked it up. Go in the corner. And he gets mad. And she's like, okay. And so she just kind of bombs away. And Soul's like, yo, f fuck, I'm going to kill you. You made me kill my girlfriend. And he's just like, and he, yes, Nate. Uh, you know what, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Okay, well, so they, they, they fight, sort of. You don't fight that man, but they fight in a cutscene. And the cutscene is just like literally two pictures standing there and text boxes going around. So there's some cool little sound effects, like, twing, twing, twing. And like, oh, they're fighting. Yes. <laughs> um, so that happens. Uh, so remember, Soul beat Dizzy. Beat Justice, killed Gears for fun for like a hundred years, can't even touch that man. He's just like, no, nothing. So can't even touch him. And he's like, fuck, I hate you. He's like, yo, soul, uh, there's something coming. There's a really big calamity coming that's going to make the crusade seem like a distant memory in comparison. When the time comes, I'm going to need your help on this. And he's just like, get fucked. He's like, okay, bye. And that's kind of what happens in Double X. <laughs> that's, that's the... That man is kind of established here to be a bit more of a round character than just like, I'm evil and I made robots. There's something going on with that man. There's more to him than just like, I fuck up shit for fun. He, he has some sort of like greater goal that we don't really understand yet. And that's kind of like one of the big things about Double X. We learn more about that man and what his motivations are. Just, just a little taste, enough to kind of say, okay, there's something going on here. Gib. So you said there was like a lot of endings or like special story. Broken. There's a ton. And that one is like the main one? That is the canon one because they reference it later. So but, do, <laughs> is it like a crapshoot of whether, whether you get that ending? Yeah, so the way the endings are determined is that there are certain conditions you have to meet in certain matches that you, it doesn't tell you about. You just kind of accidentally stumble into these. So like if you kill someone within 30 seconds, you unlock the other ending just, just by happening. So you just kind of have to play it like 10 billion times, 26 times over because there's 26 characters, and just hope you kind of stumble upon the right conditions because there is no wiki. I looked it up. It's not there. If it is, it's in Japanese or something because I can't fucking find it. I went to the, like, the plot summary of Double X. Empty. Empty? Nothing. How can this be? There are like, there are like, there are small little character entries. Up. There are little character entries for each character that what happens to them because that's the easy thing to do. You just copy what it says. But in terms of like breaking down what happened in the game, nothing. The, the wiki gives up around here. <laughs> I had to do a lot of fucking work, okay? This is serious. Digi. Yeah, I was just going to say that like generally in fighting games, usually like, all the characters have their own ending, but which one is canon is not really clear until the next game. Right. When they just kind of say, like, you just see what the story of the next game is, and you go, oh, I guess that was canon to that guy's yeah. ending. It's, it's just usually the main character's ending. Yeah, I mean, I, just, I was just looking at Soul and, and, and Kai for the most part, because they kind of guide the majority of the story. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so that's kind of really what happens in Double X. It establishes more about Batman and implies that there's some big endgame catastrophe that he knows about. That's he's kind of guiding behind the scenes to make everybody prepared for that. Uh, Eno's introduced and she's fucking hot. And uh, the post-war administration bureau is really dumb and they have bad ideas. Yeah. There you go. Okay. 2186. Five years later, the Baptisma 13 event, a.k.a. the events of Guilty Gear 2 Overture. This is the first non-fighting game in the series. And it's really fucking weird. Uh, at... It's kind of like if you took something like a Dynasty Warriors, 
like a third person kind of action game where you have to run around a big map and like accomplish things but also like put a little bit of like dota in it because you have you like summon minions and you have to control like control points on the map it's a horrible system and i hate it uh it has a little bit of a following but it was kind of also designed to be a multiplayer game uh, so a lot of the stuff was like designed to be played online but there is a story mode this is the first game that has like actual animated cutscenes, so I could actually, to, to understand this game, I could actually just sit down and play a video game. <laughs> it was fucking amazing. Um, so this game has more story, but this is also when you realize that Daisuke, writing's not his strong suit. This, this, this is all really, this is, this, is some, this is some interesting shit that goes down in here. Uh, and it's very dense and hard to kind of pull. So I'm going to need my notes for this one. Um, I'm going I'm to try, try and go through this pretty quickly. Okay, so the, yeah, this is the black sheep of the series. It takes place like, five years after Double X, so a lot of shit has happened. Um, I don't know why this didn't happen sooner, but in Double X there is, or uh, in Guilds Gear 2... Uh, they introduced something called the United Kingdom of Illyria. So I guess from here, here, all the way to here, Europe has just been fucked and nobody bothered to do anything about it. It's just like this big melting pot of like crazy shit and the only nations that are still established are France and England. Uh, Everything else is destroyed and fucked up bad. So the United Nations is like, maybe we should get on like fixing this. So they create the United Kingdom of Illyria. It's three, they divide all of Europe and a bit of Asia, I think, into three big nation states, and they're each ruled by a king. And then uh, the high king rules the rest of them, and then the whole nation kind of reports to the UN. So that kind of like solves like, oh, we have like a government and like a, a fucking like uh, social structure again. Like, you miss that? Like, that's nice to have. Uh, and so, uh, there are three kings. There's Daryl. There's Leo. Daryl. He's, he's kind of a dick. Uh, he'll come into play down here. Uh, we don't know about Daryl at this point, but I just figured I, a little bit of this is out of order just to make it make more sense instead of like finding out. Like 90% of this is told here. So I said, fuck it, we'll just put it there. Uh, so Daryl is one of the kings. Leo White Fang is the second king. And then the number one head honcho king is Kai Kisk. He he moves up from the head of the international police force to now the king of Illyria, Damn. and uh, it's yeah, he's 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 fucking he's earned his spot, man. He's he's That's done his homework. When when did this game come out? I've never even heard of this year too. Oh god, I think like two thousand six or two thousand seven around that time. Okay, what was it was it, for? it was originally what for the three hundred and sixty, which okay. makes no fucking sense because this was all Sony exclusive up to here. Except for, well, the sharp reload on the Yeah, Xbox. that was on the Xbox. But that also came out on PS2 and Arcade. It wasn't exclusively on... It, I think it was exclusively in the U.S. that it only came out. And was it only on 360, or has it been ported anywhere else? It was ported to Windows, thank God, because <laughs> I needed to play it. And it was the worst $25 I ever spent. And that's not true. But um, it wasn't very... It, it, earned, it earned its five. Let's put it that way. So the Kingdom of Lear is established. Kai is now the king. He's the King Kai, but not that King Kai. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Um, so... That, that's, how the, that's all you need to know about that. Uh, so it starts in the Kingdom of Illyria. Uh, Kai's already king. All that shit's happened in between here. Uh, and the, the corpses of sealed gears start disappearing. Just like, not just like poop, they're gone, but just like slowly sort of fade out of existence and just go away. And people are like, what the fuck's going on? That's kind of weird. Uh, and so uh, they tell Kai about it and they're just like, yeah, that's kind of weird. But like, who cares? The gear's going away. Sounds like a good plan to me. And he's like, no, that's kind of fucked up. I, I'm sorry to go back, but I'm really stuck on how exactly did Kai become king from being a police officer? What, what mechanism was used to do that? It, it's, there's did, a, did that kingdom wait, exist wait. before? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Qu- the question was, how the fuck is Kai actually king from being a police officer? It's not 100% clear because if, there's... If we don't know, then we can skip well, I can, I can, I can go into it a little bit. There's... There's, um, there's a bunch of things that were referred to in the wiki as the Guilty Gear Overture shorts. I'm assuming there's like some sort of supplementary material that takes place between Double X and Guilty Gear 2 that goes into it. It's implied. I can't go into too much because it's going to get cleared up a little bit later in the story. But he was pressured by the UN to take the position even though he did not want it. Uh, because they had okay. dirt on him and they said, if we don't want this to get public... You're gonna be our so, bitch. So someone with authority Correct. wanted him to be king. Yes. Okay, I'm he's, satisfied. He's, I'm satisfied. he's a plant, essentially. He okay. doesn't really want to be there, but he's trying to be a good boy despite it. Munchie. 
the reason he's king is because he's like a fan favorite and people like him, and so that him being an important role in this story would make people that's not like good it. For me, I want the lore. I don't, okay. th- I don't think that's true. I, Kai's not exactly like a I, huge I fan mean, favorite. Ca- ca- canonic- I mean, canonically, Kai. There's is, a reason people would hate Kai. That he we're gonna was get to. Kind of canonically like at 16, the leader of the biggest organization yeah. in the world he is, at the time. He so is he, one of the strongest. It's not as though he hasn't done this before ever. He's a he's he's good. Okay. Kai kind of strikes me as like the ride in to Soul's Snake a little bit. He is pretty gay. He is pretty gay. His his hobby is collecting teacups canonically. Oh. That really that really says all you need to know. I like him even more. So much more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cliff's Cliff's hobby was correct collecting teacups as well. That's how he got the hobby. He, they, his, do they bond over? It? Oh, he, he taught him. I guess so. Yeah. He also taught him how to Use swords, so I guess like they can't be too gay unless they swords. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, but yeah, uh, so he's he's the king. He's he's like f- shit. Uh, the gears are disappearing. This is bad. He's very concerned about the fact that the gears are disappearing, like more so than he probably should be. Which Artemis just like, what's going on here? But he's like, no, you d- go back, figure out what the fuck's going on. You keep me updated, motherfucker. He wants that shit solved stat. Um, before anyone can even do that, though, the, 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 the castle is attacked by an unknown army. I'm like, oh, shit, okay, let's go fight the army. So they go out there and start fighting these guys, but for some reason they're immune to their magic, so they can't really hurt them. So they're getting fucking steamrolled. And so Kai's like, all right, shit, we need Soul's help. Go find Soul. He sends one of his dudes off to, like, do that. Do you have a question? No. Okay. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting paranoid. Uh, this is when shit's really going to start getting dense. So, okay. So we cut to Soul bombing around, but he's not alone anymore. He has this weird dude with him named Sin. Not that Sin. Object is Sin. Yes. Right. So not that Sin. His name is Sin. Uh, he's uh, this weird kind of flamboyant looking guy who has a flag for a weapon. There's a canonical reason for that. Um, but, like, I guess he's traveling around with Soul. He's, like, a, a kind of a naive, childish, kind of stupid, doofy kind of guy, uh, which is very weird that Soul, like, the loner dude, would be walking around with him. But they're traveling together. They don't explain why in the beginning. We'll, we'll get to it. Um, and they get attacked by the same army that was attacking uh, uh, Illyria. And they're like, fuck, we got to fight them. So they start fighting, but they can't hurt them either. Munchie. What is the canonical reason for him fighting with a flag? I like flags. Tell me about the flag now. Okay, well, okay. the canonical reason is that uh, Soul has been raising Sin ever since he was a little kid. Um, and God, isn't it only like five years since the last game? All We're going to get to it. This is why I wasn't going to say it now. Okay, sorry, sorry. He's been raising, Soul, raising him ever since he was a little kid. When he was a little kid, he wanted to learn how to use a soul. Uh, here's a sword, and Soul said no. Like he's like, what should I use? He's like, just like a flag or something. Fuck you. And he's like, okay. So he actually just started fighting with a flag. He took it literally, and now he fights with a flag. Cool. That's Great. why. That's yeah. Cool. Did you, were you good. just stretching? Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. So they're, they're traveling together, and they get attacked by the the Visual Army is what they're called, and they they are immune to magic. Their normal attacks don't work, and all of a sudden they start hearing a voice in their head saying. No, your magic's not going to work. You need to use this new kind of magic. What? Boom! Uh, what? And then Soul magically learns a new kind of magic that, that breaks the laws of magical well, like, theory. Like key? Like key does? Not key. It's different it's than key. key. Munchie. So, so, so not like as in like a new spell, but as in like new types of yes. magic. Yes. So what, what this is, this is, this, it's hard because they're establishing gameplay mechanics right. using right. story. So he can summon servants which are it's like little units you use, because this is like a strategy game too, so you can summon these servants to do your fighting for you on top of you just running around with your sword. So, but in order to establish this gameplay mechanic, he learns a new kind of magic that breaks the laws of magic, the science of magical theory is broken, that, but he recognizes the kind of magic even though it's unknown. What? Okay. Yeah, okay. This, I, this is why Daisuke can't write. We're already off to a bad start, Munchie. So what is the fucking use of the, the, the science magic place if it, if it keeps getting broken and all the rules don't matter and never make any sense? Because for the normal, average, everyday person, the rules probably are fine. But this is so a motherfucking bad yeah, guy. Okay. He's the top, that, he's the head honcho. That's like asking, what use are Newtonian physics when we have this advanced, you know, uh, relativistic system of physics? For it's fucking it's chumps like okay. you and me, the theory yeah. of magical science is fine. Man. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're okay. solid, okay? All right. So, so he learns how to summon these things, and then 
For some reason, and I don't know if this has actually happened in a game or if it's just a, a, a mechanic of the gameplay itself, his soul, soul's soul, is now in this big thing behind him called a master ghost. What? And Whoa! Wait, master ghost. Oh. He's in the ghost. His soul is in the ghost. It's well, kind where's of. Where's the soul body? Then? You know, deep ground master ghost. Deep ground master ghost. Deep ground master ghost. Deep ground master ghost. Yeah. So. Soul's definitely a. Basically, you know how if, in like if, League of uh, Legends you have a base, yes. you destroy the base, you lose? Yes. That's what a Master Ghost is. Okay. But your soul is in the Master so Ghost. Wait. I don't I don't know if that answered my question. <laughs> if if the soul is in the ghost, what is the ghost? If it's, not a soul. It's literally just a structure, but they call them a master well, that's ghost. Just master ghost. Why would you choose to call it that? I know, but all the little like pillars wait. that spawn uh, your 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 servants yes. are called just regular ghosts. Wait, just called wait. ghosts. Is is souls? Wait, where is soul? Is, yeah, 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 is soul is body. soul soul still a robot soul? He's he's so, still, it, is this, <laughs> is, this, wait, is this like he was a, a human ghost person, of the machine in the machine of the ghost in the machine? Yes. Wait, wait. You're right. Okay. You control yeah. Soul's body. Right. Okay. The reason, the reason this is bullshit. This, this is just a way to establish that if you, you run around in the game and you fight, like like a like a Dynasty Warriors kind of thing. If you die in the game, you don't lose. You respawn at your Master Ghost because the Master Ghost has your soul, your actual life force. But if the Master Ghost is destroyed, you lose the game. And they're doing all this stupid bullshit magic faggotry to justify in canon why all this is happening. I, I, I just feel like it, there were a lot of ways they could have done this story without removing the soul of the main character and putting it somewhere and inventing a new type of magic. They actually do need the new type of magic. No, they don't. It's You're very, lying to yourself. It's very plot important oh, to everything after this, okay. unfortunately. I really hate to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> Okay, do you, want, do you remember when I like disappeared for like three days, last three days? I've been doing this shit. I've right. been parsing all right. this. Okay. okay? I trust you. So, so Soul's like, okay, I know this new kind of magic now. I have these servants. I can fight these guys. I can do damage <laughs> to them. They fight. They win. Um, and then this literal, the, the guy who's talking in their heads, teaching you the tutorial about this new kind of magic appears. And he is a literal samurai furry named Izuna. <laughs> Whoa. Yes. Wait. Well, not, oh, 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 oh. But for what purpose? Okay. <laughs> in suit or out of suit? <laughs> uh, in um, he's 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 I guess, I guess kind of out of suit. He's like out of suit, but he has like like animal Izuna. 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 Izuna yes. He's Look he's it up immediately. Yeah. yeah. I've been looking up characters this whole time. This is why I wanted the green screen so I could just start throwing all the shit in here as I go along. I might still do it if I'm not lazy. Oh my god, he's a furry! <laughs> he's okay. That's fucking gross. <laughs> yeah. It's reverse, it's reverse Inuyasha. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. I don't like Azuna at all, design wise. But he's one of the main characters in this game. And he says that he himself, the magic soul just used, and the Vizial army are all from a place called the Backyard. Okay. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Acceptable. The world's backyard, sort of. Actually, we're the backyard of the backyard, technically. What do you mean by that? Just explain yourself. This is why I have extensive notes on this. I had to stop everything and explain what the backyard is, because the backyard is important for literally everything else going forward. What is the backyard, Jesse? Uh, what is Guilty Gear? <laughs> Gay <laughs> shit. <laughs> Munchy. Is there backyard fun? Is there fun in the backyard? Oh, they're going to have some fun in the backyard for sure. Okay. Good. Some backyard shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, like, my you know, just to let you know, my first bullet point on what is the backyard is, this is where shit gets really fucked. Oh, no. The backyard... Yeah, I thought it was already <laughs> fucked. No, we're not even close. The backyard is a superior dimension to ours. Well, by whose standard? Yeah, yeah, God damn it. Is it where vampires come from? No. Mm, possibly. Okay. Uh, not clear. It's a superior dimension. I will explain why it is a superior dimension in a second. It is the source of all magic in our reality, or at least it contains a specific ingredient that makes magic work. 
And the reason it is a superior dimension is because we are basically a subset of the backyard. Our entire world's existence is dependent upon the existence of the backyard. If the backyard is destroyed, we are instantly wiped out of all existence in a blink of an eye. Okay. So it is literally like one order of so magnitude. Higher ranking. Yes, okay, okay. It, is a, it is literally a superior dimension. Um, since the backyard... What the fuck? No! No snacks in class! <laughs> I'm paying you for this. Got All right. Like right down the middle. This is the meme, the meme students and the good yeah. students. We're the costumes, students who are the prep students. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh and we God. always have the mic. <laughs> I know. I really need to give it back to the good boys for a bit. Okay, so, however, because the backyard is a higher plane of existence, magic can exist there that breaks the science of the magic theory of science because it's no longer bound by the limitations of our lesser world. Hippo. Is that where the apostles come from? No. Why? I didn't. <laughs> I don't it would, know. It would make a lot of sense. It well. would, but they're not from there. Um, Okay, so that, that's the backyard. They're all, Izuna's from there. He's like a, not from our kind of reality. He's a higher plane guy, and he can do these crazy magic things, and he just taught Sol how to do it. Because you can learn how to use the magic of the backyard. It just doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense based on like, observable phenomenon in our reality. But you can use it in our reality. Yes. Weird. All right. Yeah, pretty that's, fucked, right? That's awesome. Yeah, so that's, that's how he's able to do all this crazy shit. And uh, the army that he just fought were the servants of somebody else. And that's who's attacking Illyria. And so Izuna bombs in, he's like, yo, your buddy is getting fucked. You might want to go help him out. So they're like, okay. So they go and do that, and they go to Illyria Castle. And once they're there, they find this girl named Valentine. And she is the master of all the, the, the armies they've been fighting so far. And so, like, freaks the fuck out when he sees her. And it's not made clear at the beginning why. But her appearance takes him aback, and he's like, this girl's really powerful shit. Um, so they fight. This is just an excuse to have another level where you just fight this girl um, and you win, but she's like really bored. She's like, you, you're not good enough at this magic, you fucking like beginner, bye, and just kind of leaves. I need to go find the key. The key's more important than you. She bombs away to go find the key. And they're like, okay, well, she can find the key. We're gonna find the Kai. So they go find Kai instead. Um, and they get, they get to the castle, and the castle is fucking in ruins. There's corpses everywhere, everyone's dead, and Kai is like frozen like this inside like a ceiling spell, and they can't wake him up. So they're like, fuck, we need to, we need to save Kai. We don't know how to do it. But then, a dude named Raven shows up, and Raven is one of the servants of that man. So they initially, initially, immediately think that man is responsible, and Sol goes apeshit on him, and it's just an excuse to have a boss battle. It barely matters. You beat Raven, and Raven's like, fuck. You know how to use the magic of the backyard now. Now you're important. I want to kill you, but I can't. And he leaves. And then they're like, okay, shit. Uh, we can't get Kai out of here. What do we do? We need to go figure out how to break the seal. Uh, we need to go kill Valentine, because it's her seal. If we can kill her, her magic will be dis dispelled, and we can solve this. Um, and Zuna tells them that her... Her army shows up wherever there are gears, because she's the one who's been making all the gears disappear. So somehow they have the ability to track where gears are without having to actually physically see them. And that's apparently a problem. So they're like, shit, that's bad. I needed water really badly myself right now. Oh, God. So why is any of this happening? Why are the gears disappearing? Dice, it's... Daisuke, apparently, this was his original concept for Guilty Gear, from what I read, and I think it was technological limitations that made it become a fighting game, and thank God for okay. PS1, is all I have to say. Um, I like, don't know if that's true. I remember reading that on the forum years ago. Like, w when the gears disappear, where do they go, and for what purpose? Uh, we will get to that. Okay. That is plot-specific. Okay. Gotcha. I would not... If there was a point that I was going to say that isn't explained, I will explicitly say this is never explained as soon as I'm done with it. I will not leave you hanging. On purpose, at least. Um, <clears throat> okay. So they, they go, they try and find Valentine to kill her, to, get, to free Kai. They fight her again. Sol's already a fucking god at using this magic now. He's way stronger and is actually able to injure Valentine really bad. And she's like, shit, fuck, oh, you're strong now. Um, I made a mistake. And then looks at Sin, the guy that, with the flag that he's traveling, he's like, 
we made a mistake. Sin, I like you. And then she disappears. And he's just like, what the Did fuck? Did you like him? Did you like, like Yeah, yeah. it's like, is this bitch hitting on me? Like, that's weird. That's a weird moment to do that. So he's kind of a little taken aback by that. Uh, but she disappears, and they're like, well, we weren't able to kill Valentine. We still need to free Kai. And Azuna's like, I conveniently know this really smart dude who's a powerful mage. Let's go find him, and maybe he can break the seal. So they go to do that, and they go to an island called Ganymede. And uh, they meet Dr. Paradigm, who is this weird lizard dragon kind of dude with, with big nerdy spectacles and like a graduate hat on. And he floats around in a big bubble of water because he lives in water, but he wants to be on land and do stuff. And he is a gear, and he is a peaceful gear. And this entire island of Ganymede is where all these non-humanoid gears who kept their sense of, of self after the war hid away so they wouldn't get fucked with by humanity because they have no ill will towards them. They're just like, we just want to do our shit. And he's like a super smart guy who's the leader of Ganymede. Munchie. What the fuck's with all the furries? <laughs> this game, furries this game gets pretty furry. I feel like something no! happened, happened to Daisuke between here and here. No! Yeah. I hate, Not what I want. I really, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but by the time we get here, this goes full anime. Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> the exact opposite of my quality. <laughs> like, like, here, this was like very loosely anime aesthetic, and it just keeps getting deeper and deeper. No, and by the time no, you're here, no, no. like, it's just like modern anime aesthetic. Oh. Fuck! Yeah. So, okay. Why We're, didn't they stop with one, like I said? Well, Ben, you played X. You I played don't, the second that's, one. So? <laughs> I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give up my experience to make the world a better place. So they, they show up. Uh, the soul is pissed off at Paradigm because he's a gear and he wants to kill all gears. That's kind of his shtick. Um, and Paradigm gets pissed off literally because Soul refuses to refer to him as a dragon and calls him a parrot over and over again. He thinks he looks like a parrot and he takes deep offense to this. And it's a running joke that lasts for the rest of the series. Everyone calls him a bird or something and he gets really pissed about it. Retarded. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, don't shoot the messenger, man. I'm just, so they have a fight and it's just, it's just an excuse to pad out the game. Totally unnecessary because they immediately just stop and keep having the conversation. After this short exchange, totally pointless. This game is terrible. Um, so Paradigm talks about the backyard, and he's like, I've been to the backyard. The backyard's real. It's fucked up. Um, and because the backyard is a superior dimension to ours, if you're in the backyard and you can survive in there and you can learn about backyard magic, you can literally change anything in reality to whatever you want. Oh, no. You become... God, essentially. And he's like, there is an artificial construct in there that is made by that man. So that man is in the backyard fucking shit up. We need to stop him. And so they come to the conclusion that Valentine is another servant of that man, and they're working together to get all these gears, because I guess he says that gear cells contain the key to enter the backyard. That's why he was able to go in there. Because that man knew about the backyard all the way back here, and put that into the gear cells to come into play here. Wait, wait, wait. So at this point, we're learning that the, that man... Oh, uh, yeah, right. So, so at this point, we're now learning that that man, at some point in the timeline, figured out that he would need to create gear cells so that he could use them to access the backyard so that he could manipulate causality. At this point, he knew about all of this. He already knew this back at the beginning all of everything. Of he is so fucking woke that he knew did he, every did he know the, the future as well that was going to happen i don't think he knew the future okay but he knew all of the like scientific and magical concept in the entirety of guilty gear that man has known since the beginning how how does he know all these things that like he worked with with freddie aka soul back in the day I, we'll find out well I'll, I'm okay. sure I'll be i will able. explain well, I'm it just ask it I, well, we don't <laughs> we will get there okay and if you still have any questions when we get down to the end there will be a Q and A session, okay, okay. and I'll, I'll do my best. I'll do my best to try and understand the mind of this this madman, Munchie. Man, what's with all this fucking Japanese <laughs> bullshit, fucking anime um, pandering retard? I shit? really that always fucking goes for the like. There's another universe, and it's so powerful, and you can become god, and nothing matters. It just feels so nihilistic fucking to popcorn have popcorn nihilist. Yeah, M literally Munchie. popcorn nihilist. Munchie. If you were Japanese, would you want to think that this world was the only world? You have so. a tiny but dick for it, life. It, it just always there has feels, to be something more. Like, there's always like there's always weird 
afterlife death <laughs> bullshit. And there's always just like you gotta save the not the entire world, you gotta save the entire universe and all realities. It's fucking yeah, gay you're not, and you're I not, hate it. You're this not respecting their culture right now. You're being pretty it racist. Sucks. Guilty Gear sucks. Final <laughs> Fantasy sucks. Oh, Kingdom Hearts oh. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch a slice of life. I want to watch too many Pinkie Pies. Put on too many Pinkie Pies right now. That episode sucked ass. No, I mean, well, no. Yeah, I mean, okay. Okay. Let's not debate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What the fuck's even going on? Where was I? Oh, the paradigm's like, yeah. So we, we, how, that you, man knows everything. Right. That man knows everything. Yeah, that's pretty much what you need to know about this. So, uh, I, I, sorry, I have just one question. Please, please, please. If he... If I slaved over this, you have to as well. If that man has access to the backyard and can, like, manipulate things the way he wants them to go, and in fact, I think you said has, like, a machine that allows him to There's some sort of construct that is referred to as the cube, because it actually is just a cube with really fucking cool sigils all over it. And he made it? That he made. In the backyard. With that level of knowledge and control, why is it that anyone can do anything to oppose him? Since he can literally control, like, any point in time. Okay. All right. Is it a GameCube? <laughs> is that a Nintendo GameCube? I mean, the GameCube was pretty lit. Maybe that's where it came from. Oh, fuck! I, I, I'd accept that. Headcanon accepted. Done. Jesse. Fuck! <laughs> that was... From, from here to here, that was what I was saying every 15 or so seconds. Munchie. Fuck! Agreed. That's my boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. Okay, so they're like, the, the cube, it's bad. That man, he's got this shit. We need to stop him. Um, and then the Vizial army tracked them to Ganymede and attacks Ganymede. So this time, instead of fighting each other, Soul and Paradigm are like, let's burrow up and take this bitch down. So they do, they win, and then Paradigm's like, well, shit. Now they know where our hideout is and since they're trying to kidnap gears and they're like making them all disappear and we're all gears we can't stay here anymore so even though i don't really feel like because i don't think kai's very important because he's a fucking cuck i guess i'll go with you and help free him why the fuck not so they all go back to illyria castle uh so paradigm is able to instantly just like boom spells done he's a super fucking magic god uh, hippo where are we where are we right now? So we left the island of Ganymede, which is where... Or, or we're in that game. Oh, we're in, we're in Guilty Gear 2. This, okay. is the bap- this is whole thing game is referred to as the Baptism of 13 incident. Oh. Shit went down, dude. So... I thought getting Baptism 1 was bad. <laughs> you said about 13. Yeah. You were circum- very dirty with just wait until we Just wait until we reach circumcision 19. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> That's right here, dude. Yeah. That happens to all of us. All right. Okay. God, oh, God damn said, it. Free for skin. Free for <laughs> skin. Y'all are making free this for skin. Right. Yeah. You would think after 19, I'd have no doubt. Do you well. see how much it was so processing kind of things? Let's, all right. All right. This, this, was, this was an exercise in, in restraint just to make it through this. Um, okay. So they go back to, to Illyria. Paradigm is able to free Kai. He's free. He's back. And Sin is super pissed off this entire time he's been like kai's kind of dumb and i hate him and it's not really clear why but this time he's like kai you're a fucking shit king you got trapped all your men are dead you fucking suck i hate you and he just leaves and everyone's just like what the fuck just happened and kai's just like uh okay well all right moving on so um paradigm figures out like okay the these this army can track gears and they've attacked this castle three times now where's the gear and, he's, and everyone's like, what? And he's like, well, there has to be a gear here if they keep attacking the castle. Where's the gear? And Kai's just like, mm, mm. And he's like, oh, I know the gear's here. Dizzy's here, isn't she? Because she's not actually dead. You lied to everybody. I know Dizzy's here. You've been experimenting on her to use as a weapon. And he's like, no, that didn't happen. I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. I, don't, I just, just do good boy things. And he's like, show me where Dizzy is. So they go down to the basement, and Dizzy is frozen in another seal, much like Kai's, but better i guess and the reason that kai was so freaked out about the gears disappearing is because dizzy started disappearing before this game began and he somehow took the thunder seal sword the sword he got from the crusades dismantles it and used the power of the thunder seal sword to freeze dizzy in time so she would not disappear apparently you can do that 
because because Daisuke said so. So that happens. Dizzy is frozen in this stasis thing, apparently. So she won't disappear. But because Kai doesn't have the sword anymore, he can't undo the seal because he doesn't have enough power to do it. So it's like a one-way thing. And so the army is coming to get Dizzy because they can sense that she's here, uh, but they can't really do anything about her because she's frozen in time to prevent her from disappearing and going where all these other gear corpses have been going. Makes sense. Yeah. Sort of. It sort of makes sense. So um, Paradigm kind of examines the seal, and he's like, I can break the seal, but it would be pointless to do so because she's just going to immediately disappear, and that would prevent the purpose of you fucking up your sword to begin with. So I'm not going to do that. So he keeps scanning, like trying to figure out what the fuck's going on with the seal, and he realizes, oh, the gear cells aren't the key specifically. It's specifically gear cells of justice. And because Dizzy is a Commander Gear and is Justice's daughter, which I don't know if I remembered I mentioned Guilty Gear X. But no, we never said where yeah, she came from. Dizzy is Justice's daughter. So that's why she was also a Commander Gear. Who's the father? We'll get to that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so she's... Is it the, that man? Yeah. Is it that man? No. Um, that would be weird, though. So, so she's the daughter of Justice, so she has... The, the same side of like, so bad, guys. We'll get so to that. Hard. Well, trust me, we'll get to it. I will not leave you hanging about who fucked who to make Dizzy. <laughs> um, it's, it's obviously the most interesting part. I'm sure there's great dojins all about it. So I actually did forget to mention who Dizzy's father was and left everybody hanging and nobody bothered to ask. So here I am answering it right now. I won't leave you in suspense any longer. Soul is supposedly Dizzy's father. So I guess when he was still dating Arya way back in the day, I guess they kind of got it on or something, and I guess they kind of made an illegitimate child. It's not explained exactly in canon, but there is like a scene in Rev 2 where uh, there's a comedic little bit before the final battle where Sol and Kai realize that now that Kai has married Dizzy, that they are actually uh, uh, father and son-in-law so it is implied heavily and basically confirmed in canon that soul is Arya's uh lover and he's also that means he's dizzy's father because i guess somehow that works so there you go soul is the father and uh he fucked Arya canonically hooray so 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 they're like okay she she's the key to opening up the backyard is we need specifically these cells of justice. And this is not only going to open the backyard, this is how we get into the cube that that man made. Because, like, I guess it's kind of like, like, the just, because he made justice kind of like his signature on these things or whatever, so, like, he could, you can use that to access the rest of his tag or something. I don't fucking know. He said so. So, so they're like, okay, justice cells are what you need to get into the, the cube, which is in the backyard, and access his shit, and we can shut it down. Um, but then Paradigm's like, wait a minute, if we just kill Dizzy... The cells are gone, nobody can get into the cube, and we're done. Like, we, we win. So he's like, all right, flipping through his book, he's about to cast this uber death spell and just fucking nuke the bitch. And Kai's like, no, don't kill her. And he's like, stop being a faggot, Kai. I thought you were a good guy. You're going to give up your weapons project in order to, 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 to fuck over the world. You want to keep your weapon project? What, do you like this girl or something? He's like, she's my wife. His eight-year-old wife! Yes! So Kai is not only king of Illyria, he's also the king of having sex with the young. Because she was... Sex with the young. Mohammed too. Sex with the young. Nobody no, needs no. to enjoy the sex with the my young right My voice is so gone, I would have joined in with you. With that, that's an old there. meme and also one I regret. No. <laughs> so, Kai... I never regretted a goddamn moment of it. Kai, Kai is, I guess, married, sort of, to Dizzy. They are husband and wife. Mm. Um, and he doesn't want to kill her because she's just been living in the castle with him. But, like, they can't keep it under wraps. And the reason he became king under duress is because the organization knows that he is married to a gear. And they're using that as blackmail to kind of control him as head of the government. But nothing big has come of that in the timeline yet. We just know that that's a thing. Just a quick question about Dizzy. Isn't Dizzy, like, possessed by two different spirits? Like uh, she's not possessed by her, but her wings are sentient entities. Yes. So, like, when she fucks Kai, she's also fucking like this angel. This was bitch my and this, first like, demon guy, thought right? as well. Yeah. Yeah. There is like another kind of sexy angel wing, but then there's also some creepy lechery like yeah. old dude yeah. who's like a grim reaper who's. But like the thing is like, 
I, she, she's learned canonically at this point how to control her power. When her power is suppressed, they're just kind of little wings on her back. Uh, okay. So okay. they're kind of dormant, but they're probably they're probably like thinking things in her brain or something. I don't know how it works. She has like a big old dragon tail too. She does. Doesn't she? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good for pegging. True. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most important part of the game. It actually kind of is plot-wise too, um, because uh, so they need these cells to enter the 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 thing, um, enter the cube, and they're like, so we could kill Dizzy. The cube is the the artificial construct in the backyard made by that man. Okay. It's. I guess gotcha. a, I guess a weapon. They never really explain exactly why the cube is so important. Because if you're just in the backyard doing shit, you can fuck with things. I guess maybe it's like it makes it easier. I guess maybe yeah. you got maybe it's like you know like, like a higher level it's like the control. WordPress of the backyard. Instead of having to hard code your world mending shit, you can yeah. just kind of use a template. I don't know. Uh, so. They're like, fuck, we just need to kill Dizzy. And Kai's like, please, God, no. My wife is really hot. Don't do this. Um, but, then, but then they're just like, where, where? He's like, please don't kill Dizzy for my and Sin's sake. And they're just like, why do you care about Sin? He's like, well, Sin is my son. Oh. So the reason he's been, Kai's son is Sin. So the, 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 the guy with the flag that's been traveling around with Soul is Kai and Dizzy's son, Sin. Oh, so, is that why he like grew up? That's why he grew up in like three years because he's a gear. Uh, uh, he's he's a quarter gear because Dizzy's a half gear, right. and so, so he's still part gear, and that's why he grew up in like three years. But he was traveling with Soul instead of staying with them because the the government that doesn't know that they have a son yet, so he, they sent him away so he doesn't get fucked. Where are Dizzy's parents again? Dizzy's parents are Justice and Somebody. We haven't we haven't gotten to that yet. Me too. Um, yeah. <laughs> It's, 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 it's dumb. Um, so, but they're like, wait, fuck. And then Paradigm completely forgets about killing Dizzy because he's like, if, if, if Sin is Dizzy's son, he's the key too. And he ran away like an hour ago. Where the fuck is he? So they all have to fucking bomb out and find him. But of course, Valentine's back. They're attacking the castle for the fourth time in the game. Hey, what, what's the key again? The key is it basically it's like something inside of like cells derived from justice that allow entry oh. into the backyard and specifically the cube, which is really important because reasons. I'm really sorry I'm putting you all through this. <laughs> um, so they go chase after them and like they're attacking the city, the, the, the thing again. So Kai and Paradigm stay and protect Dizzy. Well, Izuna, who is still there but hasn't done anything yet because he's dumb, and Sol go to find Sin. Uh, but it's too late. He's been taken, and they, they run away. But they're able to track him. They go into this other place, which I don't really ever say where it is. Uh, they fight again. Uh, they, they, they take control. She, she's able to take control of Sin and make him a bad boy. But then you fight him as Soul and instantly turn him back. So it was totally pointless. So then they're chasing after Valentine again. But she escapes into the backyard somehow. I guess because she knows how to do that. So she escapes in the backyard, and they can't pursue her because they don't, they're not able to open up uh, the gate. I don't know why, because I would assume Soul probably has justice cells as well, but maybe because he's a prototype, they don't work. Yeah, so it's like, mm, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting way of getting around it, so they can't get in there. But then the gate opens, and that man comes out of the gate. Oh, oh, and he's just like, shit, and everyone's like, oh, Soul is immediately like, I want to fucking kill you because I hate you. And he's like, calm down, dude. I'm like, you're like you're, you can't go in the backyard. If normal people go in the backyard, they fucking die instantly. It's like super fucking insane. you got to like be super strong to get in there. And Soul's like, I'm strong enough. And he's like, show me. So he fucking, like, you fight that man. You can't hurt him at all, but you do enough damage. And he's like, okay, I guess you're strong enough. So he, like, puts, like, little, like, protective spells on your entire party. And he's like, you can go in the backyard now. You'll be fine for a little while. And then he just kind of leaves. So he's helping you, right? He's helping you. And that's exactly, like, like uh, I forget who's with you. I think Sin is with you at this point. Because there's a bunch, of, like, a bunch of times you kind of break up and go to different places. Uh, but Sin is, I think it's, no, it's Azuna who's like, why the fuck is he helping us? He's, like, the bad guy. And Soul is just like... I'm the bad guy. I don't fucking know. So it's like, it's really weird. Um, but like in this game and in XX and all this stuff, you're kind of slowly realizing maybe that man isn't as bad as everyone's saying he is, even though he made these like super death weapons. Like that's kind of weird. Why is he such a nice boy and doing all these nice boy things if he's a total douchebag and destroyed the entire world? This is weird. He's a weird guy. Um, so you go into the backyard and chase after Valentine. You have a big boss fight. She turns to this giant fucking mega death gear and Soul has to fight her. Um, and he like heals himself into the backyard 
because everyone else escapes. The gate closes behind him, but Sol's like, I'm going to stay. I'm going to kill Valentine. So this threat is over. So they fight. He kills her. And then he's trapped in the backyard because he can't get back out. And everyone's like, oh, no, Sol's gone. This sucks. So uh, uh, then that man appears in the backyard again in front of Sol. And Sol's like, what the fuck? This whole thing is bullshit. I hate you. Why? What did you do? Why is Why is Valentine look exactly like Arya? So this whole time, this girl has looked exactly like his dead girlfriend, who's also Justice. And 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 that man's like that had nothing to do with me. But again, there's a big apocalypse coming, and I'm gonna need your help on that shit, soul. And he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you. He's like, okay, bye. She just opens up a gate and lets him go out, and that's the end of Guilty Gear Overture. So, and the, why were the gears disappearing again? Um, they were disappearing because, uh, I don't know. They kind of forgot about it. <laughs> they, were originally, uh, okay. they were originally disappearing. The first thing in the game, they're like, they're disappearing so no one else can open the backyard. Oh. So, like, if no one else has gear cells, no one else can chase after us. That was kind of their first thing. Uh, okay. But then, so I think you need gear cells to enter the backyard, and then you need Justice's cells to get into the cube, cube specifically yeah. that Batman made. But that still doesn't explain why Soul couldn't open the backyard by himself. So I don't know. Daisuke said so. That's as far as I know. Okay. There's an after credit scene where that man is talking with Raven, which is one of his servants. I can't remember if Eno's there. Uh, but he's just like, there are a bajillion more Valentines being made every day. Shit's going to get bad. And that's how the game ends. Jesse. This dude's eating cereal in class. How do you expect me to stop a mountain of a man like that? Super Mario cereal, nonetheless. That's my boy. <laughs> Demerit. Wait, for me? No, for him. Okay. Yeah, for Drink. writing out your classmate, Demerit. <laughs> drinking during class is fine. I'd be drinking, too, if I didn't have to speak. Oh, God, I'm beating the shit out of stuff. Okay. We're almost done. Is this mic going to die? I know this died on fucking... No. We're good? All right, I'm terrified. I don't want to do this again. I'm already, like, I've been living this, this nightmare long enough. Okay, dead, dead, blah, 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 blah. Guilty Gear XR sign. This is a return to form back to the fighting games. This came out in 2007, 2008. This is, like, a huge amount of time later. So this is, like, 12 years since the last Guilty Gear fighting game. But this is a direct continuation from Guilty Gear 2 Overture. It's one year later, but everything that happened here is super important. This is actually a huge, big event. This is almost like as important as the Crusades in terms of affecting the rest of the continuity so far. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Uh, quick question. What the hell does the baptism 13 mean? I don't know. They just what, do you, what do you mean you don't know? That's, Who can I ask this question to if not the, you? They, they, the baptism of 13 incident is just the name they gave to Valentine and the Visual Army attacking Illyria. You know, just like, why is it mm-hmm. called? Just like, you know, oh, uh, Pearl Harbor. The Baptism of 13 well, I event. I don't know why Pearl Harbor theory. is called Pearl Harbor. I, I have a theory. It's like the 13th like, uh, new evolutionary stage of humanity. Sure. Like, it's, baptized it's, in the, it's, the, the next, it's, it's the 13th the next aneurysm state. this series has given me, trying it's to fucking figure this out. It's the Organization 13, but they will be getting baptized. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The baby. You got it. <laughs> All right. Okay, so before we get to Guilty Gear XR sign, we have to take a little detour to talk about Guilty Gear Vast Edge. Mm. Which is a. I've I, got some vast. I've, I've been doing a vast yeah. edge this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I shit you not, this is real. There is a small little game that happened in here where um, Soul starts recollecting the outrage weapons from all the way back here when he was Frederick to fight the Valentines that are coming after the first one. What, Jack, what sort of game? Huh? What sort of game are we? Supposed this, I shit you not, Guilty Gear Vast Edge is a canonical prequel to Guilty Gear XR Pachinko Machine. Oh, yeah. There is a Pachinko Machine that is canon in the lore of Guilty Gear. <laughs> Good. And important I, to the lore of Guilty Gear. <laughs> not, super, not super important, but there are a few things in XR you don't really understand where they came from unless you know that Soul already knows about the Conclave, which we're going to get into now. Um, so, remember the post-war administration bureau? They have bosses. They're called the Conclave. And now they're the new big bad boys. And they're fucking shit up in Guilty Gear x uh, So they want to do what everybody wants to do, which is revive justice. Because justice is the big guns and we like justice. <sighs> okay, so... Soul's collecting the outrages, but that's immediately discarded because I guess nobody cares because this big thing happens in Exard. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, there's uh, Illyria in response to the army that attacked. Remember... Normal magic does not affect Valentines for whatever reason. So they develop a series of automatons, like like robot sort of things, called the Opus. 
and the Opus are designed specifically to fight Valentine's and her armies. Um, so they have all these like robot guards running around because like a bunch of people died during the Baptism of Thirteen event. Nate. Uh, uh, I know there's a character named El Elfelt Elf Elf Valentine. Elfit Valentine. Is that I assume that's going to be relevant here. It's going to be very relevant in about five minutes. Okay. So, okay. All that happens. Everything's fine until another Valentine appears over the remnants of what used to be Japan. And this, her name is Ramlethal Valentine. Oh, yeah. She's the second Valentine, and she's objectively the best girl in the series. She's super fucking awesome. Um, uh, yeah, she's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Um, and she declares war on all of humanity. She's like, I'm going to fuck your shit up. I'm here. My, 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 my sister failed, but I'm not going to. I'm way cooler. So she doesn't look anything like the last Valentine, but she is still a Valentine, I guess. I guess that's just a thing now. You, you can be a Valentine. Munchie. Outside of story and background information, have gears as a concept ever mattered at all? I mean, outside of the story, what? Well, yeah, how could they matter at all? The story. Like, ha like, have there been, like, could you play as gears? As Soul is a gear and he's playable. Testament is a gear and he's playable. Justice is a gear and she's a secret character. Dizzy is half gear and Sin is a quarter gear. So those are five playable characters with gear heritage. I don't know, it just kind of feels like why... Uh, it doesn't deserve to be called out. Souls the Guilty so, Gear! The events of the whole plot have to what do with gears. It's retarded. Well, uh, yeah. We aren't going to see a whole bunch of gears. I'm not going to deny that this is retarded, but this, okay, is, just, okay. this is just my kind of tism. That's why I'm, I'm balls deep in it right now. <laughs> All right. Go back to your cereal. We're trying to pay attention here. Gladly! <laughs> okay, so. so oh, no. Jesus Christ. Keep that contained. <laughs> Oh, no, please, oh, God, I'm trying to speak. It. Oh, fuck. Okay, so... Kind of like watching Monstro, like, <laughs> the fucking... All right, guy. all right. Calm down, class. We're, we're, we're approaching the end, okay? Like, we got maybe... That man. Like, that man. Geppetto. We're going to learn all about that man soon. Aren't you excited? Yes. 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 All right, I'm going I'm, I'm gonna to plant a seed <laughs> that's going to make everybody excited. By the end of here, right here, we're going to learn that man's name. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So cool. strap in. It's, it's even dumber than that. Oh, um, sick. Okay, so Guilty Gear x -Hard sign. Ramlethal Valentine shows up above the remnants of Japan and is like, humans are gay. I'm taking you guys out. And everyone's like, shit. It's only been a year since the last time, but good thing we're prepared. We need to go fuck up Valentine all kinds of bad. Uh, so they, they, Soul, Kai, and Sin all go to the remnants of Japan to fight this new Valentine and take her out. Remember all that shit about like backyard magic and how you have to fight them with different magic? Gone! None of that matters anymore. Well, yeah. It was nice while it lasted. So that was all just like a, 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 a thing for the gameplay. You can use regular punches now. They're fine. So you, you fight... You fight Ramathal, you win, but you don't kill her because she's super powerful. And then all of a sudden, uh, uh, you get a, Kai gets a call, and it's just like, there's a big fucking death weapon above a city called Babylon. And it fucking wipes out everybody in Babylon. And, and Ramathal's like, Lamau, I brought all you out here. Well, the cradle, it's called the cradle, destroyed this entire city. I win. Oh, I see. And everyone's like pissed off. They're like, fuck, we couldn't save this entire city full of people. They're all just wiped out. Um, and she's upset about that. And so uh, they're, they're fighting Ramathal. They're trying to beat her, but she's like still holding her ground. Uh, and so Kai's just like, we need to call in uh, this other character that apparently he met before the start. And that's Elfit Valentine, another Valentine, who's apparently a good guy who's working with them. So they call in Elfit, and she comes, and she's able to cancel out Ramlethal's power because they're, they're sisters and I guess because Daisuke said so. They can just go like, you can't do shit anymore. And so she, Elfit prevents Ramlethal from killing Soul. She was going to like self-destruct herself and kill Soul in the explosion. But Elfit turned off her powers. It didn't happen and they capture Ramlethal. Munchie. So I, I know you just said that it, it's just because Daisuke says so. But so does she just like say like you can't use powers anymore and she just can't? Correct. Well, I'm sure they have what some the sort of, like, fuck? they've got, like, negative powers of each other, or, like, the same power, so it, like, I don't know. But she just says... I don't know. Well, she, I don't know. Literally, she just, she just goes like this, 
and she stops blowing she up. She uses some magic or something. Is this yeah. still the pachinko machine? No, this is this is the fighting game. The only thing you need to know from the pachinko machine is that Soul got the outrage and uh, they developed the opus. The only reason I wanted to say it was because there's a Guilty Gear pachinko machine that is canon, yeah. which I thought was retarded. That's and cool. I needed if I had to suffer with that, you all do now. Um, yeah, so they, they, they capture Ramlethal and they try to interrogate her to figure out like what the fuck's going on, what's your plan, where did that cradle thing go? Because it blows up a city and then disappears. Mm. All right, and at this point, Sol and everybody, I guess, sort of knows that there's this new bad guys called the Conclave. And they're, it's not exactly clear what they are, like if, if they're like an official government body or kind of like another sort of Illuminati thing, but they are the post-war administration bureau's bosses. They're one step above them and they control all the shit. And uh, they're, they're being bad guys doing bad guy shit, and they're trying to figure out what their plan is. They're the big enemies of this game. It's a cabal of, like, I think four or five individuals wear, like, these cool, like, steel masks, and they, uh, they sit around, a, a, like, a little table and discuss about how they're going to fuck shit up. Um, and so, but Ramathal is, like, just like any Valentine, she has, like, no emotions, doesn't give a shit. She's, like, a doll, a tool designed by what they call Mother. They refer to her simply as Mother. The original Valentine did this, too, uh, and they don't care about shit. Munchie. Stop showing off. Just use the American title Earthbound. Come on. <laughs> All right, so in, in, in Earthbound x <laughs> Okay. So, yeah, what's up? Uh, I, I, doesn't Felt have emotions and stuff? Like, she she really does. wants to get married, for example. She does. Uh, so so all, all of the Valentines, apparently, according to Elfet, because they... they... She was on the Eiffel Tower. What? <laughs> What are we talking about? Oh, shut up. Yeah. No talking between each other in class. Demerit, demerit. Uh, Get fucked. Okay. Yeah. You earned it, buddy. It's my last one. <laughs> Thank God. Um, okay, so, yeah. So they, they, they talk to Elfit, who is the nice one, the, uh, the Valentine that's helping them. And she's like the total opposite of the other Valentines. Instead of being like emotionless, she's like super bubbly, happy-go-lucky. She's obsessed with getting married because she, her original programming was she was supposed to get married to a death metal singer. Um, but that, but like, which was part of her programming, I guess. But because she was so overwhelmed with like the emotion of like getting married to this guy, it like woke up. And she realized what she was doing. She was no longer an automaton, emotionless being. She had legitimate emotions and was like, fuck, I don't want to fuck all this shit up anymore because she knew what the plan was of, like, fucking everything up with the cradle. I know, Nate. So, so she was... She was she was created. She's a Valentine created by mother, like the yes, other ones. Yes, correct. But her purpose was to marry some metal singer. I have no... Fucking idea why that had shit to do with shit. I, I mean, don't understand the relevancy I can, to the plan of wiping out humanity. There here. is there is a little bit that we will kind of we can kind of assume happens later. Okay. But for now, it's really stupid. Okay. Even in canon, she tried to like tell people who she was, and everyone thought she was insane. Like everyone just like you're a Getting fucking. Got a little out of myself right now. Yeah. So so. But she somehow was able to, she has the ability to track people, kind of like the other Valentine, and she found Kai Kisk, who is now the king, and told him about this. And because Kai's a good boy, he's like, okay. Uh, they did, like, scans on her to prove she wasn't human. She's like, all right, I'll listen to what you have to say. So, uh, apparently... Um, oh, 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 sorry, one last question. What's up? Why didn't she marry that guy? What happened to that metal singer? I don't know. Well, what the hell? Her you whole know? purpose in life is to get married. Where's the fuck is the guy she was supposed to get and now Right? It, it's fucking weird, isn't it? I think maybe he died or something. I don't remember. Well, uh, I don't really something, stu purpose. something stupid. <laughs> something stupid He's a big happened. Yeah. All right. Okay. So where where were we? Yeah. So she was supposed to initially help Ramathal with her plan, but rebels. So she knows a little bit of the plan, but she's been cut off and doesn't know anything anymore. Um, yeah. I guess develops emotions somehow. Question mark. That is my notes. Wants to save everybody instead. She believes she has emotions in response to the first Valentine not having and failing, uh, but that's just an assumption on her part, um, and confirms that Ramlethal is working with the Conclave. So, like, Ramlethal is a tool of the Conclave, which are, like, these big bad guys who are trying to take over the world for reasons, I guess. Uh, sorry, uh, what's the relationship between the Conclave and Mother? Are they, like, working together? Um, there's no relation as far as we know. There's nothing, nothing is explicitly stated as of right now. Were the Valentines made by Mother? They were. 
but why do the conclaves have authority over? I. Wow. Okay. So I mean, I mean, just to cut cut things short, the the conclaves being used by mother. They think they're in charge of ship, but they're not. They're being used oh, okay. by mother. Okay. To to further mother's plans at this point, but they think they're in charge, Munchie. What part of any of this am I supposed to like? What, what part am I supposed to think the is part cool? Where the fight, cool fighting. The part fighting. that the part that most people like is the actual game that has nothing oh. to do with any of this. Oh, we're wasting our time. Yeah. Oh. If you clicked on this video not expecting to waste your time, I don't know what. Munchie, you need to understand that this information is not out there. Like people who play these games yeah. don't know this shit. Tom is the only one who knows the entire story of <laughs> Guilty Gear, and this is on the his only shoulder. thing. Yeah. This is the only. Only source that I'm will not, ever exist. For I don't this, want to toot my own. I don't want to toot world. my own horn, but this might be the most like complete like video collection of Guilty Gear knowledge in English. Yeah. Like yeah. as sad as that is, I will wear that badge with pride. Um, okay, Dude, so that. so they're 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 talking with with Elfit, and Soul is just like you're full of shit. I don't believe you for a second. I want you dead uh, because that's a very Soul thing to do. Uh, Kai is like, I guess we'll believe you. Um, they have Ramathal captured. Uh, does stuff, blah blah blah. None of this notes really fucking matter. Um, I'm 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 shocked. There's this could be a lot longer. I'm shotgunning through a lot of stuff right now because we've been going for way too long. Um, yeah. So they 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 threaten to kill Ramathal, and she doesn't care. She doesn't even care to die. She's already failed in her mission, so she feels like she has no value now. She's just a tool, a tool who's failed, and she can't do anything. Um, so. Uh, fuck. So the Conclave is doing this bad shit, working with Ramathal, and. Uh, Kai has his suspicions that they're being like watched because the Conclave is like the super secret organization. So they decide to go to Zep, which is the nation that Potemkin's from, we talked yes. about earlier, because they have nothing to do with the United Nations. The, uh, uh, the Conclave has no authority there, so they can like meet up there and talk freely and not worry about being spied on and shit. So they decide to go to Zep. While they're going to Zep, Sin becomes friends with Ramlethal and Elfit. A really kind of gay anime montage of friendship and shit happens and 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 like they, he gives her a puppy and gives you know, this is a hamburger isn't it great and she's like whoa I'm experiencing sensation and so Ramothel slowly kind of starts like awaken emotion in herself as well and Elfit's there too and they're all having a good time there's a big little like uh, uh, montage of them doing silly things in this ship as they're flying to 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 Zep and uh, shenanigans of anime proportions happen uh, yeah okay maybe Maybe he was finna smash. You know what I mean? I, I don't understand. understand. It was, oh, never mind. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm running out of steam here. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> this, is, this is pretty ridiculous. We're in the home stretch, though, right? We are. We're almost. We're, oh, cool. I really hope so. We're going we're gonna to go through this quick. <laughs> so. That's my boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, so there's there's another B plot of like someone who I haven't t- like people I haven't talked about this entire time because they're not important until right now, and it's the Assassins Guild. So that's Slayer, Melia, Venom, and Zato. They're all members of the Assassins Guild. They all oh, know each other. It's like they're, all the characters I play, I didn't well, know they were related you, to. You each all other. play the Assassins Guild, yeah, and so they are also where the Conclave is fucking up because the <laughs> Assassins Guild was apparently uh, working with the Post Administration Bureau on shit. So they were actually part of the government for a while, uh, doing like all the dirty shit that they didn't want to get done. And so they know the Conclave's up's no good too, and they're fucking with them. So they also decide to go to Zep and meet with Kai, because every time they're trying to meet with Kai, this guy called Bedman, his name is yeah. Bedman, comes in and fucks with them. So Bedman is this little boy in a gown who is asleep and strapped to a robot bed, and he fights with oh, a robot right. bed. I shit you not, this is real. You, fight, you can play this. Yeah, he's a playable character. He's one of the, he's one of the new characters. The bed has a little robot head and everything. It's crazy. Um, so, In, incidentally, both Valentines are also playable. Yes. Characters in this. Yes. They're both hot. They're pretty hot. Um, so they all they all meet up in Zep, and Zato, the leader of the Assassin Guild, is like, "You're right. The Conclave uh, is is doing the shit." And so. It's we, everyone is surprised that Zato even shows up because in the end of Guilty Gear XX, he dies. He should be dead. Wow. He's the guy with the belt on his head that can control shadows. Right, yes. Yeah. I thought that was Eddie. 
Eddie, okay. Eddie is the shadow. Eddie is the Eddie is the for what the fuck? Eddie is the forbidden beast. But depending on depending on which game you I told play, you right around this area is where shit gets really <laughs> stupid. Well, it's this that, was all fine. It's that depending on which it was game you not play, fine. he's fine. Like, it was not <laughs> fine, Tom. What's up? I, I, isn't he called Zato in one game and Eddie in another yes, game? Yes, because in like, Guilty Gear like, X, he is Zato. Screens. And he's yeah. controlling Eddie, the Forbidden Beast. In Guilty Gear Double X, he is dead, and Eddie is just controlling a corpse. Right, right. But, he's, but is he back now? By Yes, so by, in, by the end of Double X, um, uh, Eddie's story in Double X is that the corpse is deteriorating, and if the corpse gets destroyed, Eddie will also die because he's dependent on this corpse. Wow. And at the end of the story, I guess he dies. But and now he's saying that the Conclave was able to revive him from dying. And the reason they did that is they're trying to experiment with binding souls to other bodies. And their big plan is to bind their, their leader, Cronus's soul, to the corpse of justice so they can be the big bad and okay. make, remake the world in their image. And standardize humanity is their little, their little thing. Is Justice dead now? Justice, or do they have to kill her as part of this Justice plan? is is dead. She's been dead since Guilty Gear 1. Yeah, what? She was trapped that between was, dimensions, right? She was trapped between dimensions at the end of the Crusades. But you remember, she's, Testament revives her in Guilty Gear 1 and Soul kills her at yeah. the end of that game. Right. So from Guilty oh, Gear 1 on, she's dead. She died. But her corpse is still hanging around, I guess. Don't really know why. Um, interesting thing now, in Guilty Gear 1 and all these games... Justice is like you, like a, a character, so she's kind of like bombs around like your size. Apparently, she's supposed to be the size of a fucking skyscraper because that's how big she is in these games. Oh. <laughs> mm. Well, all right then. Yeah. I don't know if that was just a technological limitation to make her playable, but now she's a fucking Gundam, essentially. Like Gundam size. Really weird. So that's their plan, is they want to bind their soul to justice and control and become a gear, a commander gear, and control all the gears and... and, and Control everything, Munchie. Where do they store this Justice Corps? Oh, we're getting there. Oh, okay. I have, I have one question. Why don't they just take Dizzy instead? Because Dizzy's around, and she's a commander gear, too. Why uh, don't they just use Dizzy? Well, Dizzy, Dizzy, I don't think Dizzy's as powerful as Justice because she is a humanoid commander gear. Oh, and she is half gear, too? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wait, Justice, right. Justice is ostensibly more powerful than Dizzy. All right. Which, I mean, Dizzy's still a fucking god, but Justice is the big, the big thing. Um, yeah, so that's their plan. Uh, so they go, they go to stop that. I'm skipping a bunch of stuff because this is already taking way too long. Um, blah, blah, blah. Fucking kill me. Um, yeah, thank you, please. Yeah, so, uh, Bedman attacks Zep because he wants to fuck these guys up because he's working, like he's, he's working, I guess, with, he's working with Mother, essentially he's working with the valentines so he's like trying to fuck their shit up and this is where gabriel wrecks train on bedman who's really powerful is able to beat like slayer zata and all those guys all at the same time and then fucking gabriel just comes in and just punches him to shit and just he gets fucked up it's awesome who's gabriel again gabriel is uh the guy who works with potemkin he's the leader of zep right gotcha. so like literally everybody gabriel's such a badass they're all just sitting around like all these the, the entire main cast of guilty Gear is talking about this plot and then bedman attacks the 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 the, country, the old whole floating continent's in trouble, and everyone gets up. Like, we got to stop Bedman. He's like, I would be remiss if my guests had to take care of my handiwork. I'll be back in a second. Like, enjoy some tea, and goes out and just fucks the shit out of Bedman, and it's awesome. Uh, so he's he's a fucking he's a fucking dope guy. Um, but then uh, I, I guess like somehow Bedman escapes and like appears in front of Ramlethal and like tells her to like he was gonna he's gonna kill her because she's like a loose end. But then he realizes she has emotions. Uh, and, and it's like, oh, I guess I can't kill you now because I have a sister complex. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, I, I, I'm really skipping over shit now. Um, so, uh, yeah, they, they then bring back, uh, they're, they're, they're fucked up. They don't know what to do about f uh, figuring this out because apparently the cradle, that thing from the beginning that destroyed Babylon, has appeared a couple more times and they can't really track it. And they find out that the corpse of justice is hidden in the cradle. Uh, that's where they're hiding it. And um, not only is, that, is it there, it's a ship, and the conclave is hiding inside there as well. And it doesn't disappear, it's teleporting into the backyard, and that's why they can't find it. Um, and the reason it kills everybody is because, again, if it's the, the, the dumb explanation that the game gives is that the way the attack worked with the cradle was this big orb that kind of expanded outward and vaporized everybody it touched. What, what uh, they say, uh, Dr. Paradigm comes back from the weird parrot guy, he comes back and he says that, 
it's expanding the backyard into our reality and then like it swaps the spaces so it can teleport away and because everybody's a, a basic bitch and they can't uh-huh. reduce the backyard they just vaporizing it and die so that's how the weapon works but they're not really trying to actively kill anybody i guess question mark they're just like because you can't stay in the backyard forever if you're not from there so basically the the, the metaphor they use is like being in the backyard is like being underwater and you have to keep coming up for a breath every now and then or you will fucking die. So they keep popping back and, and just kind of like not dying is, is kind of their plan. But they're kind of in there scheming in the backyard with, with this corpse of justice trying to fuse himself to it. But they need power to do so. They need a huge amount of power. And something I t- forgot to talk about, but it doesn't matter because it's a very obvious like uh, Chekhov's gun, is to talk about this thing called uh, St. Elmo's Fire which is like this big lightning bolt that strikes every 13 years and it saved them from the Crusades, so they kind of worship it. Uh, and that's very clearly going to be what the bad guys use to power justice. Like, wow. Because they literally, the plot just stops. Like, let's talk about St. Elmo's fire for a second, even though it's never been mentioned before. And they're just like, okay. So that's, that's their plan. And Illyria Castle is a big lightning rod designed to harness St. Elmo's fire so it doesn't hurt anybody. So they, the, the bad guys storm the castle eventually and everybody has to fight them off. And then you find out like, like they, they teleport the, the, the body of, of justice to, um, oh God, I'm skipping so much. There's, there's, a, there's a whole part where they decide to attack the cradle because they can predict where it's going to show up now because Dr. Paradigm's a genius and can figure everything out. So they're like, okay, we're going we're gonna to attack the cradle, but we're go- how we're going to do it is we're going to launch Soul off a giant fucking missile straight at it. Oh. For no reason, because they have ships and stuff that can just go there, but because it looks really cool, we're going to strap Soul to a missile and have him punch it really hard. Whoa. That's the main idea that they're going to do. So, the, But they can't do it effectively because it has what they call the absolute defense felion. It's the ultimate defensive spell. It can't be countered by anything. So their plan's going to get fucked up. But then that man shows up again and decides to help them. And this is literally the point in the game where I, I, it jumps the shark and I don't understand. I have a direct quote from the game. This is the quote of the game that broke me. Let me find it. God, I want to die. Um, shit. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Wow, Rarity. Friendship really <laughs> is magic. It, it's great. Okay. This is the literal dialogue that that, that man says when they break the, the absolute defense felion. Understand, this is the kind of dialogue I had to translate to make this understandable for you people. He says, Magic draws its power directly from the backyard, and I'm serving as an intermediary. Frederick's fist will carry more energy than anything on this planet is capable of producing. I convert that energy into matter, and we would contain that in a pocket dimension using the Schwartzfield radial limit. We then destroy the physical space occupied by the barrier, creating a spontaneous microverse. The rest, the rest is, a, is simple. We only need to ensure the world isn't destroyed in the process. Actual dialogue from this game. I can really end the presentation right here. So this was literally this morning, too. I was still taking notes up until this morning. Um, So they they destroy the cradle, but they don't destroy justice. They teleport it away. Then they find out about the Illyria plot with St. Elmo's fire. Uh, Soul punches the guys a lot. They stop it. But the opus that they had to protect them are all actually gears. Uh, so they control all the gears. They have to fight them all off. Uh, Kai gets shot a bunch of times, but he turns out to be part gear somehow, and they still haven't what? explained. Yeah, Wait, he's part gear. Stop. Yeah. Why? We don't know. Still hasn't been explained. But, like, he literally, like, one of the Conclave just murks him in the chest, like, seven times with a handgun, and he just gets up and has a red gear eye and just kills him. Oh, he's apparently a gear. Yeah. Um, so they, they beat, they beat the, the Conclave. They're bad, and... <laughs> And Bedman gets away, and, and the, 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 the mother is like, well, fuck, my plan failed, but I'll get them next time. Do you think that Kai got, like, do you think if you fuck a gear, you, like, You become STD? a gear? Uh, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe those gear cells are a, a sexually yeah, transmitted yeah. disease. That makes enough sense. I mean, that's, that's honestly the, mo- the, the most exposure he's had to gears at this point, other than killing yeah. them, and nobody else got turned into gears, so I don't, I don't know. How many guys have fucked gears? Yeah, uh, that's the Raises end of, of Sign. Well, let me tell you about the gear wars. <laughs> yeah, my note on, on Kai turning into gear is literally, what the fuck does this mean? We're never told. So, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, so the St. Elmo's fire comes down. Dizzy is free from her seal, and she's able to overload the system and fry the corpse of justice. Then Soul pulls him out of it and beats the shit out of him. They win. 
and and that's that's it. I'm sorry. Who who did Sol beat the shit out of? Uh, the 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 Cronus, the header, the leader of the Conclave, uh, who's uh, the ba- the big bad of this game. Um, yeah. God, there's a lot that I left on the table, but this is just this. The storyboard in this game is literally just a four-hour movie, so you can just sit down and watch it. Um, oh God, I'm, I'm gonna try and do Revelator in ten minutes, so we can just be done at, at eight o'clock and be in my three-hour window. Okay. <laughs> Munchie's so done. Okay. Almost, almost as done as me. This is all just anime shit. I told you this it's is where the shit. All just anime where shit. Where the fuck is Mickey Mouse right hey. now? I just want to go on record that I think the story is really cool. And I've been enjoying it a lot, and I can't wait to go play Guilty Gear. With all Dude, this newfound knowledge. all of this shit, you can just watch it. This is 15 yeah. hours of cutscenes you can sit back and enjoy. I mean, this part's been kind of retarded. But overall, it's super fucking retarded, dude. <laughs> is this Xerd Zer- Sign? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Xard Sign. This is the first release. The second one is Guilty Gear Xard Revelator. This is the second version and has the rest of the story. I always then. wondered what the fuck was going on with the story in Guilty Gear X, and I was frustrated that, the, like, I never found out, no matter how much I played the you game. You just had to spend three weeks on the internet. Yeah. What's up? I like the part in Revelator where there's like this little online lobby with all the little arcade machines and you can walk up to them and get beat up by Japanese people. It's cute. Is that just the online mode? I think mean, this is the lobby. Where, where does that factor into the story, into um, the grand lore? <laughs> Daisuke does what Daisuke does, I guess. Okay, so... I'm a good boy. I'm going to go through this quick. Guilty Gear Xard Revelator, a few days after sign, uh, everybody now knows about Mother and they call her the Universal Will. Uh, for no reason, I guess. Um, <laughs> well, that's a bit of a loaded phrase. Yeah, I think there's... The weird thing about this is that there's a story mode that's like a five-hour movie, but then all the arcade openings and closings for each character are prequels to the story. So you can't just play the story. You have to beat the entire arcade mode with every character first to understand the context for the story mode, which is really fucking stupid. So I didn't do that, and I'm... Wait. You said you have to beat the arcade mode to unlock the story? You don't have to unlock it, but like everything that happens in the arcade mode of Sign and Revelator happens before the story mode of the game itself. So there's like two stories? The arcade mode, then the story mode? Correct. Why wouldn't they just put all the story in the story mode? Because God hates me. Yeah, so, okay, so the universal will... I'm sorry, Tom, I don't mean to be interrupting you. It's just, this no. is really getting to me, and I, I'm getting, okay. Imagine being the one who has to parse it all from, from the source. Yeah. All right, so the right. So Guilty Gear sign ends with Ram, uh, Ramathal's a good, a good girl now. She's, she's with our boys, um, but Elfit was apparently uh, uh, actually bad the whole time. Oh. Her, into- her whole death metal Wait. backstory <laughs> thing was bullshit. What? She thought it was real. She th- wait. She thought it was real. She but thought her it was real. Were just a no, no, no. Fake. Her. Th- she thought it was real, but her, um, her, her programming that she got from mother was to, pre- like, not know that everything you're saying is full of shit, and then once justice is revived, now you turn on, and now you're a bad, mindless automaton. I guess that is like mind control. It's something. it's basically mind control. <sighs> So, 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 so they're like, oh, fuck, we have to kill, we have to kill Elphit, our good friend Elphit. Oh, and, and then, but, but through the power of friendship and sisterhood, Ramathal turns her back, but she can't, like, escape uh, Mother's Clutch. So, like, remember the absolute defense felion? Yes. That is what we call shitty writing. <laughs> so every time you need something to be stopped that we can't actually stop, we put an absolute defense felion around them now. So Mother puts an absolute defense felion around Elfit and transports her back to the backyard along with what's left of justice. And that's how Guilty Gear Dark Shard Signs ends. And Sol swears that he's not going to let another person he likes die like he did with Arya. He's going to save Elfit. Because through this entire game, there's tons of backstory that explains everything I talked about over here. Oh, okay. okay. So that's kind of the theme. Is like he's trying to be a nice boy now and have friends again. What's up? Uh, just a quick question. Which game is it where you can actually fight as... Uh, I know in one of the games like you can play as Sol... Wearing his outfit oh, from the Crusades. Yes, in. that's Accent Core. That's Accent, okay, okay. That's when you can play his Holy Order Soul, mm-hmm. and he's pretty cool. Um, there's actually a story mode that's fake at the end of that one where you where Soul has to fight Order Soul because he was sent back in time by Eno. Oh, it's oh. all fake. And you die. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty right. stupid. <sighs> okay, okay. Revelator, uh, uh, we, we go to the Universal Will, who is actually the Saint Papus... Saint Maximus Populi, the leader of the entire world, is actually the univ- like the, embo- the 
embodiment of the universal will on earth and is the mother in charge of creating the valentines so this entire time that the, like everybody's big boss like the number like kai's boss and all of their bosses she's been the big bad the whole time and she's been slowly manipulating everything to to work to her will and now she has taken back the corpse of justice and elfet is holding both of them prisoner and i guess all of these all the valentines are like ha- like clones sort of of Arya Hale the girl all the way back from the beginning um or like derived from her injustice became justice yeah so they're all they're all kind of related in that way and she wants to um you know what? I'm just going to skip all this cuz it doesn't matter blah 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 there's a guy named the original sage who's like who first entered the backyard and kind of like discovered magic and all of his disciples his dis- this, the the disciples of the original sage are that man and the apostles and the apostles were also the conclave and that's that so so everybody's related oh. yeah you have no idea what i'm talking about Wait, do you no they remember i wondered where the apostles went they were yeah. the so they they were the conclave okay the apostles are the conclave correct all the all the conclave except for cronus is dead now at the end of exard but um they they they've been doing shit for like 200 years somehow so, they just didn't die so the apostles were in charge of the post war yeah, they were their bosses. The post-war administration bureau are just boys, but they reported to the conclave who are the apostles. But they're being controlled by mother. Mother was manipulating them to further her own goals, and she's also the universal will. She's referred now as the universal will, Munchie. What are her goals? We're actually going to get to that right now if you want. We can just skip all this gay shit and get right to the answers we're all Please. desperately looking for. Please. Yeah, so uh, there's another guy named Axel. He's a time traveler who's like Soul's best buddy throughout all these games. But he has yeah. what was he Axel, this whole time? Axel Lowe. Yeah, he's a time traveler. He's a time yeah. traveler. He's right. actually from the year 1998. He was from right before the dawn of revival, oh, yeah. and he was ripped through time to the time of Guilty Gear One. Um, and the, he he his entire his entire personal stories. He wants to get back to 1998 to be with his girlfriend Megumi, who no. has been left back he there. He shouldn't go there. No, it's a, it's a terrible idea. But you know. Your dick is very powerful. So is he relevant in the story somehow? Right now he is. No way. Yeah, so he's, he's not mattered at all, but he canonically is like Soul's one buddy, mm. uh, even though they don't hang out anymore. Like, Sin's kind of replaced him as his buddy, I guess, in the, the story. But before then, they were kind of bros. Um, so Soul wants his help to do something to, like, beat back the universal will, because everyone's mad at the universal will now. Everybody knows about it. I'm, I think in the arcade mode, everybody found out about it. I know, I'm sorry. Is there... Is there a physical manifestation of this universal will? Yes. Like, so the universal will is, um, it's, it's basically like something in the backyard. But the, the, the manifestation on Earth right now is, the, is uh, Ariel, so the Saint Maximus Populi. She is the ruler of the entire planet. Okay. So she has... Have manip- people, so people have like seen her in person this whole yes, time. The, the, like she's been around. Revelator starts with her making a rousing speech about how great humans are. But then she immediately teleports where Elf it is and say, humans are gay and I'm going to kill them all. It's going to be great. Okay. So she's totally full of shit. And she has a f- public-facing appearance where she's a great person. And even Kai like, loves her. Like, Kai, she's, she's Kai's boss. Uh, so they're, 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 they're nice. Uh, but she's actually bad. So, um, yeah. There, there's some weird plot. I don't understand Revelator at all. I'm just going to throw that out there. Apparently, Japanese people are turning into gears and, turn, and then they explode. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, 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 wait. There's, there's, so there's some left in the colonies, and apparently, like, Japanese people are calling, like, weird gears, and then the gears explode or something. Why are... Give me that goddamn microphone, did you? <laughs> God dang my pictures of... Uh, why would Japanese people turn into gears? I don't know. Okay. It's, it's interesting because this is, like, the, the thrust of the beginning of Revelator, is that, like, there's... There's these weird earthquakes happening, and the earthquakes are like bringing gears up from the ground, like these big monster gears. Okay. But they're happening where Japanese people are okay. for some reason. And like, are, are the Japanese people turning into them? Because again, gears are modified oh, organisms. Right. Maybe, not clear. But uh, halfway through this game, completely just doesn't even care about that anymore. What's yeah, up? Uh, my headcanon is that key is, is, is Japanese, and <laughs> that is why they can turn into gears, because it's special. Cool. I'm, I'm for it. And also, uh, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Ben. I was going to ask about key, because we never really talked about magic. Uh, like, do any of the characters use key, and like, what does it do? 
do? Well, key can simulate, can like emulate any of the other elemental magics. Um, it's also like basically just like life energy. It's like contain. It's like kind of like spiritual, kind of martial arts kind of thing. It's kind of similar to like our kind of idea of like key and chi in general, like the real world. But it like does cool shit. I would assume like Ban and uh, the the fan dude. I don't know if Anji uses Anji, key. Yeah. Uh, he might. I know. What about Biken? Uh, yeah. Biken. Um, Cliff uses key, and then I know uh, Jam uses key, uh, but I don't know about anybody else. Cause I none use his key when I uh, go in my house. Cool, yeah. <laughs> none, none of those characters were plot relevant, so I didn't dig through their, their lore. I kind of just stuck, uh, stuck to the main boys. Yeah, okay. This fucking guy right here. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, yeah, that happens. This game is really weird. Um, oh, also, the, the Universal Will has been around forever. So, like, uh, the Dawn of Revival, that was the Universal Will, <laughs> fucking with everybody. Wait, what? Yeah, so the Dawn of Revival, the thing that was trying oh, to manifest, no. what? Uh, that was the Universal Will. Uh, so the Universal Will has been fucking with humanity forever. Oh, um, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is, like, the big, big bad, I guess. Um, and then remember when uh, Justice fucking blew up Japan. Yes. The universal will was trying to manifest in Japan, and the only way that man could save humanity was to destroy all of Japan with justice. So he was actually, he was, he was being a good boy. Just like we were when we nuked fucking Japan. Oh we had God. to do it. It was right. It was Kojima good. did it again. <laughs> okay. So, so wait. Um, they've got the universal will. Correct. Is the alien who turned, who turned off It's technically not an alien, but we're about oh, to get okay. to that. But yeah, turned sure, off the sure. iPhone. Mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> the, the, and then the apostles who are, who who are they? Still? They're the ones who told the us apostles. About magic. The they're, apostles they're, are the guys who came here and told us about magic and taught humanity how to where use magic. From still, they are the disciples of what the game just calls the original or the sage. He's the first guy who discovered the backyard, and he's the one who's like actually discovered magic. I guess we don't know anything about him. He's just a dude. He actually gives Axel Lowe. I guess he's like still floating around. He gives Axel Lowe a coded message that only that man can understand. Uh, and like his stories, he goes finds that man and gives him this coded message. So that man just bombs in. Everyone's just like talking about how we find the universal will. This is fucked up. Then that man just kind of bombs in. He's like, I will tell you everything. So he, uh, 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 let me find my notes because there's no way I'm going to remember this if I don't do that. Um, 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 done. Done, yeah. Lecture over. Uh, yeah, the original sage who discovered the backyard way long ago, desi- he desired for everlasting peace. Because remember, when you go to the backyard, if you know how to use it, you can change the, the world however you see fit. So the original sage's wish was for humanity to have everlasting prosperity. He didn't want... Anything bad to happen to people. He was a good boy. He was a good guy. And that's what he wanted. So in order for that to happen, he created, the, he created a construct, like a supernatural construct being that exists in the backyard that was designed to just kind of like influence the world and keep everybody doing good. Uh, so it's, it's, it's specific instruction to help humans, never to harm them. Uh, the construct just studies humanity and try and learns how to best do this, but eventually, because humans are like so fucking disparate and crazy and shit, it started to ask itself, what the fuck even is a human to begin with? Um, so it, it decided the best thing it could use to, to, to give a definition to humans are something with soul, like a soul, freedom, like, uh, like desire and things like that. Like a soul bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> More like a soul good guy. Soul's a pretty good thing. Um, but yeah, so, so it, it, for some retarded reason, this construct decides that uh, even though like having a soul and like your free will and all that stuff is what makes you human, at the, the rate we're going, we're going to like become so lazy and shitty and awful that we're going to like not do that anymore, I guess. Uh, like it, it says that uh, it calculates that humans will inevitably undermine their own happiness and free will as they progress societally. Um, and it basically destroys our expression of a soul. Therefore, human beings don't actually exist. What? Wait. That's, that's its conclusion. That humans, that what it has defined humanity as is, doesn't actually exist yet. Oh, we are not okay. humans. It refers to us specifically as redundancies because we're redundant life forms. And its new mission is to, is, is to destroy all of humanity and usher in an era that real humans can spawn from. And that's why it's trying to fuck everybody up. 
The iPhone did this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Siri! <laughs> I, I, Siri is the universal will. I, I, I was going to say that this sounds like literally Meta Knight's Revenge, <clears throat> where that's the plot of all of Guilty Gear is basically that they're fed up with how lazy and shitty humans, a.k.a. the inhabitants of Dreamland are, and so he goes into a genocidal crusade <laughs> to make them actually yeah. do work and be cool. Okay. But this, what's this... A, a destruction of the soul of humans? Yeah. Do humans change as a result of this, or is it just determined that humans were never good enough? To humans were never good enough, because our inevitable okay. end game was going to undermine the entire point of, of the Universal Will's programming in the first place. Okay, and the Universal Will is the construct Correct. that was made by the Sage when he went to the backyard, Yes. and that manifests as Ariel's or whatever and, and Ariel's. Is. She is the current manifestation. She was also the gotcha. previous... Sanctus popular. She kind of just possesses them and like becomes them. She's been running the show for a while. Gotcha. So, yeah. It's really weird. Okay, also, so, so, so it has not... Her, uh... Like, the, the Sanctus Populi has been like a... Like, it's been multiple people over the course of Correct. years, but they've all... Been yeah, remember, ba- all the way back in 2008, one of the first things the Apostles do is they establish the Sanctus Populi. Right. That's like the yeah. leading government body of, like, magic land. Because we didn't have like a way to like govern that, so all right. this time right. she's been bombing fucking shit up. Because I was gonna say, because like I said, Japan's destruction was actually that man trying to save humanity from the universal will. Because he's known about it forever. Because he's a smart guy. Why didn't he tell uh, Soul and? Not, not exactly sure. Because I, because that man is not really. He's like. He's like one of, the, he's like the apostles. He's like long living. Like in Guilds of Gear 2, Soul specifically says, you made yourself way younger. Like he regressed himself age wise. So he's not really a human. And at this point, Soul was a human. So he probably didn't want to like mess up his simple little life. But he also turns Soul into a gear. And we learn why that happened. Because remember, Arya was terminally ill. And Soul was very sad. But they were all already best buds with that man. So that man hatches an incredibly convoluted plan. To, 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 to turn uh, just turn, to turn Arya into justice, a gear, and soul, both of them. And so he has there's another Valentine that he introduced here that works with him uh, called Jack O, which is one of the, the cool characters that comes in in Revelator. She has like a cool like right Halloween mask and stuff. Uh, she's really cool looking, but she is apparently an incomplete uh, copy of Arya's soul. So if Arya fuses with justice, it will become purely human you mean jacko if, if jacko fuses with justice the corpse of justice the corpse of justice they will combine and will create a new aria so basically resurrect aria so this entire crazy fucking shit that that man has done he's just been looking out for his two best buds he's trying to save her from death and kept soul as a gear to be alive long enough for all of it to happen. And soul's pissed because he hates him, but now he's being a good guy. Was there not a simpler way to accomplish this? But how could we have all these games if Daisuke didn't go yeah, ham on this shit? So that's that man doing his thing. He just wanted, but, but he didn't predict that when they started making all those weaponized gears, justice would go crazy. And that, that, that he didn't want to happen. But up until that point, he just wanted to create two gears that could live long enough so he could fucking fix everything. That was his original plan. But he fucked up. Hippo. So who is that man's name? Um, that man's name is... This is going a little forward because it's, it's a, one of the last lines of Exard. It's Auska R. Kreutz. Oh, oh, it all makes sense. <laughs> that is his name. That's like it's, a thing, right? That's a... Uh, I have What's no, that? Ben was just memeing. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. it's just it's that's just his name. His that man that man's oh, actual correct. name is that's Auska a, R. Krauts. Underwhelming name. I know, I know. Like I said, it was going to be really stupid. It's no wonder he called himself that man. Yeah. In a million years. <laughs> yeah. So, um, he didn't want anyone to know. It's long story name. short, they 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 fight. What's the name? There's a really cool scene where um, all those gears from before they all like pile on Illyria and everybody's there so everybody in the game has this huge long awesome choreographed fight scene where they all fight these gears so your favorite guy beats shit up it's fucking cool uh, and then Sol Kai and Sin go find uh, the Universal Will which is Ariel's they have a big fight um, 
at some point, uh, Ramathal, they think she's dead, but she comes back here too, so she's fighting as well. And uh, what the, their plan they have to do is they have to, um, so, so the, 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 the Universal Will's plan, I guess, is, to, is like to use Elfit or something with justice to make like a super weapon to destroy humanity, to reset it, and pave the way for a new, better human. Uh, our boy's plan is to replace... Because right now, uh, uh, Elfit is like fused with, with the body of Justice. She's trapped. She can't get out. They want to replace Justice with Jack-O. Because if they fuse, they will destroy Justice permanently. There will be no more body to worry about. And we will have a new version of Arya. So Sol can get his girl back. And they do that. There's a lot of other bullshit that happens with the lasers and stuff. But I'm not going to go into lasers. that. Uh, Axel does come back. And he freezes time. That allows all this to happen. So he is plot important. Okay. And he... He's the ultimate bros before hoes guy because his story mode says he's been time traveling so much he can only do it one more time. Oh, no. So he can either go back to his time and be with his girl or save the world. And he chooses to help out his bro soul, Whoa. get his girl back instead. Wow. He's the That's ultimate the wingman. He doesn't get enough recognition. Good, good boy. He's a good yeah. Boy. So all that ends. Everybody wins. The universal will is, is defeated. Um, I guess. I, either if it's just that part of it uh, is defeated. I don't know. I don't know if she actually dies or just that form of her dies. Uh, so that's good, uh, but Sol gets his girl back. He has like they fuse into Arya, and he's like all kind of happy about that, but kind of weird. Uh, and then he still needs to settle his score with with that man. And so eventually they're gonna have a big final showdown duel to settle everything once and for all. Even though everything is kind of already settled because he got his woman back. I don't really get it, Hippo. When does Jack O Jack O? <laughs> Whenever you want, dude. Okay. We're done. We did it. I mean, there's a ton of stuff left here, but if you want to go watch the movies, go for it. Guilty gear! We did it. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Holy fuck. If there's any lingering questions, I'll do my best to answer them now, because I did leave a lot on the table. I guess that's why the tagline for Guilty Gear is simple and clean. Right? Uh, uh, question. <laughs> question. <laughs> why? That was the dumbest thing ever. Go. Why... Why not? So when Arya comes back, when Arya is revived by combining Jack O and uh, Justice's body, correct? Does that just bring back Arya like as she was before, and she's just restored? To we life? don't know. Oh, have you as seen her yet? Have we seen her? We we've seen her body, but she's just unconscious and naked and kind of kind of okay. hot. Is it okay? So Justice was fused with L. Justice L was L. was sort of fused. She was kind of like trapped. Sort of fused with with justice. It's What's her name? Elfit. Elfit. Elsa. Yeah. Elsa. Elsa. Yeah. yeah. Let it go. Elsa. She had to let it go. Let go That's of justice. So yeah. so okay. And justice was like made of Arya. Like Arya was like the base that they created justice out of. Yeah. Yes. So they just kind of swap Jacko in there. Yeah. Jacko, I guess, like, there's this <laughs> interesting, Jacko, Jacko's first appearance was in Guilty Gear Xard's second rev, which is like the second thing after this, but I just added it because this is just DLC. Oh. Her first canon appearance is in here, but all the way back in Guilty Gear Double X, she appears as like a shadow standing by that man in one of the cutscenes. So oh, even whoa. all the way back fucking here, all of this was apparently planned. Wow, shit, all right. Whoa. Uh, Okay, so the, my last point of confusion is, is just that... <laughs> so, you're doing better than me, then, if this is your last point. So all of that man's schemes... His, his, what, is it true to say that his sole motivation was to, like, help his friends and protect humanity? Yes. He's a good boy. He is a good boy. Yeah, the end, the, the, uh, this game ends with him turning himself into the authorities because his, what he wanted to do is basically done, so he's going to face retribution for all the shit he did. He's going to own up to his mistakes... Take it on the cheek. I don't know what's going to happen. It doesn't explain it. But he's, he's a good guy. He, he had to do some really hard choices in order for the, the, the good of humanity. But he is not evil. So by the end of Sir, big, he's no longer the big bad. Now it's the universal will. And she's still at large at the end, right? Uh, we have not defeated her not, yet. Not hundred percent clear. It's assuming that like the Valentines and the Universal Will is still something that's going to be a thing that is going to be a problem, um, because again, it's not sh clear if this Revelator was the merciless apocalypse that he kept referring to Soul about, or if that's still to come. Mm -hmm. uh, but I guess we'll find out eventually. Jesse, what is Guilty Gear? <sighs> well. 
It's a fighting game. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Can we play it? Yeah, we can. It's upstairs right now. Class dismissed, everybody. Video games, video games, video games, video games, video games.